middle school teachers. What is the cringiest thing you've seen a student do? Director of technology here. I don't really have much to do with the kids at the school I work at, but I definitely have a cringy moment. Called down to the middle school from my office to debug a problem for a teacher. The classrooms in this building all have two doors. One door opens into the building hallways. The other opens to the outside. My office is across a field from the middle school. So I decide to just cut across the field and enter the side door to the classroom instead of going all the way around the field and entering the classroom from the hallway. Bear in mind that these outside doors are almost never used by anyone except for an occasional fire drill. I open the door and step in to see a room full of students facing away from me and towards their teacher. The student closest to me scrambles to click X on her browser but not before I see full on. Hardcore. Yayoi Hante. Did I mention I work at a Christian private school? She turns bright red and with visibly trembling hands she closes her laptop lid. I burst out laughing, which interrupted the class. The teacher looks to me in questioning confusion and the students stare in silence. I casually walked over to her and said, loudly enough for the classroom to hear, let's not look at memes and Facebook jokes at school guys. Her flush red face contorted with fear suddenly relaxed. Her trembling hand stilled. I laughed again and went and debugged the wireless access point issue I was called down for. No point getting her expelled over hormonal changes and curiosity. Dude, you saved that poor girl's existence. If people she knew found out about that and she got punished her for it, she would have wanted to die. Valentine's Day and a boy brings a girl a dozen roses. They were both in my homeroom, so I watched this all go down right in front of me. I had literally never seen these two have a conversation before, either. Girl didn't know what to do with roses at 7am so she threw the roses in the trash can literally 20 seconds after it happened and went on her merry way. The boy never found out. I hope he had a rose bush, because otherwise roses are expensive as frick. We had this one kid in our 8th grade class stick his entire hand in a cake that was being passed around for a party. Grab a chunk and started eating it like a Neanderthal. It was chocolate and his face was covered. When he finished his chunk of cake with everyone looking in disgust he then proceeded to lick every finger. It was torture watching. He also ended up being the kid that threatened to blow up the school at the end of the year. If you have any way of contacting said kid, tell him I said he's a C. What kind of twisted human being sticks his hand into a cake? Around the 8th grade dance season, they call it prom. There is a whole lot of cringiness roaming the halls. One popular tactic among the boys was explained to me. We ask the girl to prom, and then we run away so she can't say number. Taps temple. I caught the student on google search attempting to look me up. He spelled my name wrong and my name is very common so I wasn't worried. I sent him home since it was an after school homework club and then went through the rest of the history which included boobs naked women Megan Fox nudes and Megan Fox panties. One of the other students in the class kind of picked up on what was happening and mentioned that he has also been kicked out of the public library for similar reasons. Once a friend of mine described his quest as a kid breaking into puberty, trying to figure out pee. He described how he would google boobs and variable equivalents and not getting much. It was honestly the most relatable and funny story ever. He was telling it in spiritual life class. There was always this kid that would go up to guys, shake their hands and deeply sniff their necks. One day a teacher asked why he did this to guys and all he said was if I did it to girls it would be weird. To be fair, the kid had a point. I once offered a boy a My Little Pony color by number sheet, ran out of Super Mario. The boy's response, Mister, I'm not gay, I'm a lesbian, I like girls. Well done. I was demonstrating convection, which included burning some newspaper. One kid piped up with hum, that smells like incest. He meant incense. They were too young to get it, but I nearly died trying not to laugh. Maybe that kid's siblings burn newspaper while they smash. My husband teaches English at a middle school. He brought some creative writing assignments home to grade, and since I'm an assistant teacher for much younger humans, kindergarten, he drafted me into helping him sort through the mess and grade them. We've made good progress through the stack when I pick up a paper that had a kiss mark near the name in lipstick. Okay, that's odd, 
but I'm used to working with kids who are only just figuring out bathroom habits. A little lipstick on a report is hardly weird in my book, plus middle school. Then I see the name, Hun, who is our husband, without missing a beat. R is this goth kid who looks like a rainbow threw up on him after having marathon sex with a unicorn. I look back at the kiss mark. Glitter lipstick. Nice shade choice if the kid is going for goth pale. I read his creative writing assignment. I get up halfway through to go pour myself more wine. It's extremely well written gapey featuring my husband and another teacher at the school. The kid is going places. I don't know what those places are, but he's going places. I had a student who would constantly butt into people's conversations, and when they asked him to mind his own business he'd stand up and proclaim nobody likes me, everyone thinks I'm so annoying, haha <laughs> and he'd laugh while everyone awkwardly stared at him. Another kid literally told me one time that he would just act annoying so that he could impress a certain group of boys. They were not impressed. Comma nobody likes me, everyone thinks I'm so annoying, haha, <laughs> well, at least he is honest with himself. I had a 6th grader lick a book, he definitely tried to keep it on the DL, so he looked around, made sure no one was looking in his direction, and then licked the book, it was a tongue poke, then a full out lick up the spine of the book. I had a classmate who had to give a presentation using powerpoint, so there is a computer hooked up to a projector that is pointed at a screen that fills the wall. This guy sticks his USB with his presentation and the computer and it automatically loads the images he had on it in a gallery. He had a full folder of pictures of girls from his class he had downloaded from Facebook. That was kinda awkward. This has to be the most genuinely awkward thing I've read in this entire thread. My mom is a middle school English teacher. Once, a student snuck a bar of soap into her class, ate it, and proceeded to run out of the classroom and start vomiting. Apparently, he did it to impress his friends. One of the kids responded to questions like Pikachu. Shame that a good kid is going to look back on those days with absolute horror. Jokes on you. She never let anyone stop her from reaching her dreams. And now she is a Raichu. Not a student in particular, but a whole bunch of them. I was a substitute teacher for a few years on my university breaks, but last January was the worst middle school day I've ever had. 8th grade science class. I asked the kids to open their textbooks and work on the assignment. A girl shyly raises her hand and says miss, there's something inappropriate in my book. Of course, some kid drew a dong. I calmly tell her to erase it and move on. Three more kids say the same thing. I say if you have something inappropriate in your book. Please just erase it. Every kid starts whining about how there's dongs in their books. Since they won't shut up about it, I take the offending books and replace them with different books from the back of the room. Every. Single. Book. Had a huge dong drawn in it. All 90 something of them. Crudely drawn dongs. Artistic dongs. Squidward freaking Spongebob. You name it. It was there. The kids rioted. I almost quit. Squidward freaking Spongebob. I am less than 15 comments into this thread and I'm already dying. I taught 4th grade last year, and I had a student who was 12 years old, middle school age, held back a few years. She always did very odd things to try to impress her classmates, but they were relatively tame, until there was a line in the bathroom and she took her pants off, squatted over the trash can and peed. 4 or 5 girls came running out of the bathroom and told on her, Sometimes the students telling on each other can be cringy enough. I once confiscated what I first thought was a note being passed in class, but turned out to be a gay fanfic one of my students wrote, pairing two of her classmates. Tweak x Craig. Had an 8th grade girl pretend to pass out because she was upset. She got written up for screaming that another girl was a freaking bee in the middle of a science lesson. Then got upset when that other girl didn't also get in trouble for looking at her wrong. In the dean's office she was so upset that she pretended to faint. Complete with back of the palm to the forehead and dramatic exhale. And then laid on the floor until we were forced to call an ambulance. Before the ambulance came, mom walked in. She worked right across the street, and said, Damn it Jennifer, we're not doing this again so evidently this was a regular happening around their house. At this point, the girl squinted her eyes open but refused to actually get up. 
When the squad got there, they checked her vitals and basically knew she was fine. They had to take her because we can't take chances with this stuff in schools. We all just kind of looked at each other and shrugged. So, yeah, that was cringy. We get drug seekers who fake seizures a lot. This medic once told me about an adoc who called him over to the doorway after bringing one in and says watch this before saying loud enough for the patient, who was faking a seizure right there. I'm not sure if it's a real seizure because she didn't pee her pants right on cue she pisses herself. I will relay a short story that my 7th grade bio teacher told us. In that class we dissected a cow eyeball, the year before us. A student pocketed the lens of the eye. Looks like a yellowish hard thing about the size of a peanut M&M. In his next class he stood up and swallowed it in front of everyone. Another teacher told me about a student he had who would come to school in different costumes. Ninja, soldier, etc. And stay in character the whole day. I do not remember the details but there was an incident in which he threw throwing stars during a talent show. The eye story actually made me gag. In 6th grade science class, our teacher asked if anyone knew what the arms of an octopus were called and this kid immediately raised his hand and blurted out testicles everyone was laughing including the teacher, who also snorted. His face was so red. Kid wore clothes to school with the price tags sticking out. When asked why I was informed that this was to let everyone know he was wearing new clothes. You should tell them that it doesn't really count unless you staple the sales slip to the front of your shirt. Got another one. A girl masturbated in class using the edge of the seat. Not discreet either as many of her peers had a WTF look on their faces. This girl was sweating hard. Seriously most uncomfortable office meeting and parent conference. I work for a private school. This middle schooler recently started dating another one. The girl decided to come to school in a black leather miniskirt and black leather tank top combo. At recess which I watched because it's a small school. She was dancing all around in front of her boyfriend and hanging of the fence stripper. It was hilarious and so cringy. I had a student from a conservative Muslim family wear white see-through sweatpants with a visible black thong on underneath. She brought the clothes to school and changed in the bathroom before class started. One student wanted to ask me if I had a doppelganger. What he actually said was, do you have a dingleberry? I also had a girl ask me what food stamps were, which isn't surprising because the district is very affluent. I explained, but she still seemed confused, so she asked what it means to blow a trucker for food stamps. Evidently she was reading a book meant for a more mature audience, and her worldly knowledge hadn't caught up to her reading level yet. Now I'm self-consciously thinking of all the things I did that make me want to collapse in upon myself like a dying star. But see this is comforting to me to see how common embarrassing crap is in middle schools. Makes me feel better about my own embarrassments. Oh I just thought about another. They were talking about dank memes which were about banned class BTW. I was told, Mrs. Confuzzle Deb don't look up dank memes okay. I told them that I had been on the internet since before they were born. I was born into the dankness. I was molded by it. You merely adopted the dankness. By the time you found B, I was already a man. There was a student who had his hands in his pants, moving his hand up and down almost to a rhythm. That was cringy. I just stared at him in the eye till he noticed that I knew, and then he stopped. I had one of those. He wasn't allowed to wear pants or shorts with elastic waistbands after a while. I organized an activity that was sort of like never have I ever, but positive and meant to build empathy. Basically, a student would say you're in my boat if, and whatever they say that is the same as you, you have to stand up and find another chair. Great activity. One of the girls, who I often found puzzling because she just did and said things that were nonsensical, started her period and got blood all over multiple chairs. Some kids start looking at the seats and have no idea what's going on. The girls in the class figure it out, but don't say anything. They just avoid said tainted chairs. The boys, however, are as dumb as a box of rocks and are touching it and sitting in the seats. I'm sitting there horrified. Since one, that's disgusting too. I didn't initially know who was pulling a carry in three. How the heck do I nonchalantly stop the activity to get this biohazard cleaned up and no one really notices? After a short observation of the students, I noticed that the one girl was the unfortunate cause of all this, 
I told her that she was to do a favor for me, and I stepped outside. I asked her if she knew that she started her period, and she said yes. I sent her to the office and then went back in the room for damage control. I honestly don't know how I concocted a magical excuse, but I told all the kids that we were invited to go to the library for silent reading time but had to go now because all the good squishy seats would be taken if they didn't hustle. They believed me, and I sent them down there. A few girls stayed behind that figured out what happened, and I told them I knew and sent them as well. I finally get on the phone and inform the unfortunate janitor about the bloodbath in my room. When I had my period at school I was constantly paranoid about standing up and there being blood all over my chair. It happening while playing some kind of weird musical chairs is like some horrific nightmare. Not sure if this counts. Had a student projectile vomit in the middle of class. This is in middle school. Poor girl sat in the middle of the room. Vomit managed to get into the seats next to, in front of, and behind her own. Somehow. So much buff and so much shame in that little girl. But then she didn't want to go to the office. She just wiped off her mouth and wanted to stay. This student spent an entire semester speaking in a Russian accent for an experiment. No one questioned him. First day back from winter break. He is back to talking normal. We were all incredibly confused and his parents ended up going to the superintendent about our school allowing bullying. A Korean guy at my high school randomly started talking in a British accent around junior year and kept it up until graduation. Sometimes he would talk in his normal voice. I teach history and let my students do a powerpoint presentation on the history on anything. Some kid did the history of furries. He came to class wearing his fursuit. I teach high school now. I teach 8th grade. This student had talked to me previously in private about how the girl he liked was in my class the same period he was. He said that they had almost dated when they were both at their previous school before transferring to the one where I teach. On top of that, all the other students were aware that he had a major crush on this girl. So, one day, he finished his class walk early and apparently he just couldn't take the hormones raging inside of him anymore. He blurts out, loud enough for everyone in class to hear, look, girl's name, are you gonna date me or what I pretend to work through this while cringing so hard on the inside. I see every other student in the room work through this, from shock to laughter to pure amazement and curiosity as to both why he would choose this moment and what on earth her response would be. The girl very politely said, I'm just not looking for a relationship right now. Thanks for asking though, TL. Dr. A kid asked his crush out loudly in front of the class only to be rejected. That's pretty mature rejection for 8th grade. Had a kid who legitimately believed he was a Sith, like from Star Wars. His helicopter mom would come flying down to the school crying religious discrimination if you told him otherwise. He would relax his throat and talk in a deep voice and say it was his real voice but he disguised his voice to not scare his human brethren. On free dress days he'd wear an all denim outfit with high waters and denim vest over a denim shirt. I had him for science so he'd blurt out things about alchemy from an anime he was into whenever we were working with a periodic table. He also had a girlfriend who lived in Mexico who was also his cousin. Humankind cannot gain anything without first giving something in return. To obtain, something of equal value must be lost. That is alchemy's first law of equivalent exchange. In those days, we really believed that to be the world's one and only truth. After 10 years of middle school, I should had a novel's worth. However, so many years of middle school decimates your brain and as someone else said, middle schoolers are generally cringy most of the time. The kid who wrote Mrs. Sharpnet loves cookies on the board when he sincerely meant to write cookies definitely ranks high up there, though, we all cringed that day. I agree with the desensitization that comes with being a middle school teacher, I've taught 8th grade for 10 years, I really don't have one cringe moment that really stands out. They just become part of normal life in an 8th grade classroom. Sigh. Not a teacher, but in 7th grade biology we dissected rats, and the teacher warned that they might be juicy from preservatives, so I grabbed my dead rat, turned it over in the air and shouted you gotta squeeze the pudding out of it my lab mate fainted as brown juices poured onto the table. I am now an adult biologist who does not do quite the same stuff. Oh my god. I'm just squealed in my bed at 2am. Thank you. Thank you so much. 
walked in bathroom because there was a commotion while my students were in there. This boy has his pants around his ankles, pointing at his junk with both hands, asking all passers-by, who wants to touch? I said, student's name, pull your pants up, while shaking my head, and I walked out. He came out after with a bright red face, saying, Mr. Fingerlingerlinger, I swear I'm not gay no need for a consequence, as he was embarrassed enough. Kids pick their nose and usually eat what they pick while I'm teaching. I think they forget that I can see them while I'm at the front of the class talking. Not a teacher, but I interned with one recently. Apart from the kid who insisted on being called Frisk, Undertale, I guess. But the craze had died down so it was just weird. There was one girl who wore a cat ear headband. De kinda cute. Since they were the metal silhouette type that kids wear. But she paired it with a freaking cat tail. A big, black and white, furry cat tail. I am in high school and know someone exactly like this. She's crazy and smells bad and insists I am her best friend. I hold both grass fear and hatred for this girl. Not a teacher but when I was in school those track pants with snaps down the side were popular. The boys would try to yank the pants off each other during class changes, and they all wore basketball shorts underneath. One day some guy thought it would be funny to rip off a girl's track pants, however she didn't have shorts on. Bright purple undies on show and the look of terror on that boy's face was hilarious. She just ran off and a friend followed with her pants. In high school my brother and I were both in theater. The other kids started a trend of pantsing one another, but one day they tried it on my bro. He was going commando that day for whatever the frick reason and the entire backstage. I was up front building sets, got a view of his pale hairy butt. The trend withered and died that day. I had a student who would sit in the back of the classroom and pretend to masturbate while staring at me. I really did not want to have to get the principal involved for what I understood as extremely poor decision making in an attempt to impress his classmates but two instances was enough. I had to watch him tell his mother what he had done in horror. Just finished my first year of teaching middle school. I had one particular student who did not view me as an authority and refused to work in my class. This was especially concerning because this student was placed in an advanced class and chose to not learn purely because of who the teacher was. This also meant that the student's classmates were well behaved, gifted students. One day, while the whole class was completing an assignment, this student was not working. But when I addressed the issue, the student threw a fit and started crawling around on the floor, underneath the other students' desks. Now I don't know when you've last been in a middle school classroom, but the floor is absolutely filthy. This student thoroughly embarrassed themselves, as was evident by the looks received from the other students. The whole situation was extremely awkward for everyone, especially when the student realized that they would get no support from the other students. Just trying to start a game of night crawlers. Kid in a fedora offering high fives in the hallway, but then dabbing just before the other person's hand made contact. It was supposed to be a prank for a vlog. I had a couple of marker clear fangirls a couple years ago that just gave me the heebie jeebies. Group of about 20 kids that run up and down the halls shouting about memes. One of which, when asked what he did over the weekend, started with so, do you know the? Insert obscure meme, while making Earth Day posters one kid tried to disguise pot leaves as palm trees. There were several I love trees on it. Earth Day was on 4 stroke 22 so he also wrote the first two with a swirl at the end so that it looked like he'd written 4 stroke 20 but it just looked like 4 stroke 202. I probably should keep a list, but they happen so often I don't think I'd ever be able to keep up with it. Not a teacher, there was this girl who liked the popular athletic girl. She liked her a little too much. She made a slideshow and presented to the whole class. Felt kinda bad. One of my mother's students took a whole pizza in the box out of her office and just started eating. When told to stop and put it back he licked the rest of the pizza and asked if he could have it. She said no and told him to throw it away. He started arguing that it was better in his stomach than in the trash. My mom was furious. Not a teacher but I had a classmate on a field trip rub mud all over his clothes and body so he could go home. Turns out his mom's car broke down and she couldn't pick him up. He had to wear his muddy clothes for the rest of the trip. One of my best friends ate a couple x lax so she could go home early one day in high school. 
except she had locked her keys in her car, and her dad couldn't pick her up until like 6 that evening. And none of us wanted to give her a ride home while she was pooping her guts out every few minutes. Rachel, if you're reading this, I love you, but this is still one of my favorite stories to tell. Stories College University Profs, what is the most memorable email you've gotten from a student? A few years back, I was working as a lab tay and I had an older student who really seemed to resent being taught by a 20 something fellow student. In the syllabus for this lab was a rubric all the TAs had agreed on. Part of the grade was always including units on numbers and we'd take off one point per unit missing. This student handed in a lab report with zero units anywhere so I followed the rubric and took off points. I expected her to come talk to me, since I told them every day to talk to me about any issues and I'd do my best to give back points wherever it could be justified. I try to be nice to my students because you get it, labs suck and you don't have time to do everything perfectly. I didn't hear anything from her until the next lab was due. She emailed it to me and said, since it's apparently okay to take off an exorbitant amount of points for something as trivial as missing units, I'm not going to use units anymore. I have no clue what the heck compels a grown butt adult to act like a 5 year old. She eventually stopped attending labs and I have no idea what happened to her. A few years ago I was teaching a design studio for first year students in our program. My boss had enacted a tough attendance policy from on high, as many of the freshman undergrads often tried to skip studio. Because of this, I frequently received requests to miss class for stupid things like football games and house parties. And the requests got more and more ridiculous as the semester went on. One day I was checking my work email and noticed a request to miss class that Friday because I am playing in the Quidditch finals this Saturday in Canada. Since it was Wednesday and our class was about to start, I decided to confront the prankster in class. I get to class and see the students crowding his desk. Well, apparently he knew I wouldn't believe him, so he brought his gear into class along with an album of photos of him playing Quidditch throughout high school. Now, I am a self-proclaimed Harry Potter fan and I felt so shamed that day I just let his absence slide. When he returned to class, he brought photos of his match and even though they lost the game, he seemed grateful that I didn't penalize him. Can confirm Quidditch is an actual thing. I went to exchange at University of Toronto and there's a serious varsity Quidditch team. Not a professor but my professor did show us an email that was sent to him by a student about 10 years back and he kept her anonymous. The content of the email was basically she had to skip class and didn't know how to phrase it so she said sorry I couldn't come to class my fanny is on fire. End of email. This was a Tuesday Thursday class so she sent the email on Thursday and she sent another email Monday saying I will be attending class this coming Tuesday, I'm sorry about missing class, but the fire is out. She was strange. Sounds like athlete's fanny, she needed some tough actin' and actin'. I was a TA, for one semester in college, if anything, it taught me that I never wanted to be a teacher. When your students are the same age as you, they expect you will quickly cave in, and their excuses sound like they are citing references. That semester I had to fail one girl because she never showed up to the laboratory sessions, which was mandatory. Her excuses started pouring in about 3 weeks before the class ended. Here is her best line, keep in mind. These are primarily students in the pre-med pre-dental programs. I have my period every week at the time that lab is scheduled so it's been difficult for me to make it because of heavy menstruation. I know that this may not make you happy, but if you don't pass me I'm going to have to take this to the head of the department and possibly to a lawyer because you are discriminating against women. So, I forwarded the email to the professor teaching the course, he emailed it to his boss. It made the rounds, gathered a few chuckles and that was that. I ended up failing the serial menstruator, and told myself I'd never teach again. Menstruator isn't a word, really? Yes it is. I hope you told her to see a gynecologist for her chronic menstrual problems. This is an email chain from a student I don't think I ever actually saw. Can I get an extension? Double quote. You haven't turned anything all year. I'm not even sure if you've been to any classes. It's December. What possible reason could I have you giving you an extension? Double quote. I paid for the class so I deserve the credit for it. You paid for the chance to learn. You chose to not take that chance. I look forward to seeing you next semester. 
comma you paid for the chance to learn. You chose to not take that chance. Freaking brilliant. Freshman composition class. I had a student stop showing up after the first couple weeks of class but she didn't drop the class. About a week before the last possible drop date towards the middle of the semester, I emailed her telling her that because of how much class and work she had missed there was now no chance of her being able to pass the class and she needed to drop while she still could. She responded with a long plea to please give her a second chance and swearing she could make up the work. By this point she had missed half the work in the class. I reminded her of the attendance policy that did not allow you to miss more than 3 classes without penalty to your grade and pointed out that she had missed 15 classes. Which was a guaranteed F even if she did all the work but she continued to plead with me well past the last drop date. I would receive an email every 2 or 3 days from her begging for a second chance, telling me that if she failed the class she would be forced to drop out providing every excuse about how busy she was with work and family and continuing to insist that she was fully capable of making up the work. This went on for 6 weeks. I finally got so fed up with it that my last message to her told her that if she had put as much work into the class as she had to begging for a second chance she never would have been in this position in the first place. That I was not going to respond to any more messages from her and that she could take it up with the director of composition if she didn't like it, who I had already discussed the issue with and he had my back. She was still on campus next semester, though I knew from the beginning that she was lying about being forced to drop out if she failed my class. The moral of the story, if you start to fall behind in a class go to the professor straight away. Most professors are willing to work with you if you're upfront about what's going on. Vanishing and then coming back begging for a second chance is not going to put you on any professor's good side. I'm the assistant for a group of theoretical physics professors at a large university, so I get a lot of emails from students or prospective students looking to get in contact with a professor. This one kid emailed me, and then called me multiple times, asking if he could come in and just tell somebody about what he'd been working on. He kept saying, everything they know is wrong, what I know will change physics forever, and had a general hopped up on upper's tone. But, he couldn't tell me anything specific about his research, so I knew we were going nowhere. Eventually, the way I got him to leave me alone was to say that no one will listen if you don't have a degree, and I pawned him off on admissions. It was annoying, but I also felt bad because it was obvious that he wasn't quite right mentally. Apparently this sort of thing is quite common. I am a physics librarian and I have heard that some long. Serving physics librarians have a crackpot file where they put all the manuscripts from lay people who are convinced that they have found Einstein's big mistake or whatever and what their magnum opus added to the university library. This isn't an email, but it's the most memorable student interaction in my two semesters TAing for a 300 person American literature survey class. Because of the large class size, the professor had the students sign up for a certain week to turn in their big term paper, so I averaged grading about 30 essays a week. Each week was connected to a specific author that the student had to write about, week 1 Nathaniel Hawthorne, week 2 Walt Whitman. You get the idea. This one student signed up for the week where they had the option to write about either Harriet Beecher Stowe or Herman Melville. It appeared on the online sign up page as week 6. Stowe, Melville. The student wrote her essay about a person named Melville Stowe and I'm pretty sure the biographical details and literature references were a combination of Herman Melville and Walt Whitman. My friend turned in a final term paper on water chestnuts, to her zoology class. There's one in every bunch. I was TAE for an 80 person class and would proctor exams for my professor. One student would show up 30 plus minutes late for every single exam. Then, when time was up she would be the only student left taking the exam, and when I would try to collect it, I'd get no, I get extra time because I'm a snap student, essentially she had some sort of learning disability, and she was permitted to take the exam in a separate location with extra allotted time if she set it up beforehand. Every time, I would explain this to her, tell her I had places to be, and take her exam away. Before the final, my professor told me she got an email from the girl's mother bitching about me not giving the girl adequate time to take the exams, and my professor told her that snap didn't apply, and if she wanted more time, she should show up to the exam on time. The mom apologized and said she'd talk to her daughter. Sure enough, on the day of the final, 
The girl shows up an hour late to the 3 hour exam, and tries that same snap crap again. She failed the course with flying colors. Comma she failed the course with flying colors. Oh snap. Assistant professor, biologist here. I do mostly field research in conservation, but I teach some bioinformatics courses as well. I had a student email me with a question about an upcoming assignment. A simple Perl program meant to be a component of a larger bioinformatics assignment for later in the semester, very late on the night before it was due, but also include a string of emails from him and several classmates discussing various possibilities for cheating on said assignment if they couldn't finish on time. In effect he forwarded and added me when he meant to compose a new email, and my assumption was that he was frantically emailing friends and chugging coffee at 2am, while trying to figure out how to complete the work. This was a group of fairly uninspired young minds, and in a way I was a bit sympathetic because I suspect a few of them were in over their head with the subject matter, plus, well, nefarious or not they were actually staying up late into the night trying to get things done. I hadn't been teaching very long at this point, I went to graduate school on a research fellowship, so I was never at A and I was really unsure how to proceed. My university has a pretty hardcore student on a system run by students, and this kind of thing could earn someone a suspension or expulsion. I talked to my wife about it, and she suggested I wait and see if they actually followed through with the cheating before proceeding with any punishment. So, I simply replied to his email as if nothing at all were wrong, and waited. Assignments came in, and all of the guys involved earned pretty dismal grades with no evidence of any wrongdoing. So I'll let it drop without saying anything. I still wonder to this day if any, or all of them noticed the mass forward and spent days crapping their pants over it, and now just think I'm a totally clueless guy who didn't notice. But yeah, that may be the funniest strangest email I've yet received. Comma DR wet farts, comma assistant professor, checks out. Student here, we had to post on a website documents of our writings for critiques, so I accidentally clicked nude pictures and submitted. For a document it would prompt a cancel screen since it takes a few seconds to upload but due to good internet connection and small file size of the image it was instantaneous. Also the sidebar has a preview of all files uploaded so by scrolling over it you see a nude picture of a vivacious Asian. My whole class is Asian and the teacher is a female. Also the professor can only delete image files apparently. I upload 20 files just to put the image down at the bottom of the file queue. Then I had to send the awkward email to my professor. She responds and saying it was a mistake no problem and applauds my efforts to minimize the situation and had the courage to explain the situation in a formal manner. That teacher sure must be nice. Earlier this semester, a girl at my university made national news when she emailed her professor asking for her absence from the next class to be excused because she was celebrating a religious holiday. The holiday? Beyonce's birthday. Here's the transcript of the email. Good evening professor, I would like to inform you that I will not be in class today due to this holiday. On the 4th of September. 1981 the lord blessed us all with the goddess that is queen beyonce Knowles carter's birthday out of respect i will not be attending class today the lord's day for any further questions feel free to contact me have a blessed day and remember beyonce loves you so bow down apparently the girl meant it as a joke and didn't actually mean to send it but clicked send by accident everyone right now go turn on the unsend feature in gmail labs student but i was emailed by another student and it was pretty interesting in our information security class we had just finished the chapter about trojans malware and the likes one of the things that is quite particular to this story is that we had just finished learning about phishing now for those who do not know phishing is sending bad links in an attempt to get a user stupid is implied to willing give up their username and password well two days after our test on these bad files a phishing attempt started going around the university. It was sent by a supposed student trying to get people to attach their university accounts to a study site. After you signed up they would email everyone else in your classes about the supposed study session. Well, one of the kids in our information security class fell for it and gave them his username and password. One of the people emailed was the teacher. The teacher called him out during the next class for being a dumbass. Pretty sure he failed the test too. 
Haha, <laughs> that's terrible. At least it was only the one guy. And now he's learned a lesson he will never forget live down. <laughs> Not a prof but we had a group project. We had a student named Matt in our group. After our initial meeting he stopped showing up to most our meetings. When he did show up he would yell at us if any suggestions deviated from his ideas. Fast forward one month and we have a team case study due. He emailed the night before our first case analysis was due to ask us what case we were supposed to analyze. Needless to say he never submitted his part and our group was up all night doing his part. We were fed up and decided to contact our professor to address our concerns. I will never forget his response. I've removed him from your group so please continue as a group of four. As far as I'm concerned he's dead to me. To this day he is one of my favorite professors. I had a student who was pretty behind in the class. I wasn't faculty at the time but a student teacher lecturer. Anyway, in the last week before finals she asked me about extra credit. At that point it was already too late. So she emailed me saying that she would do anything for a few extra credit points. The implication was pretty clear. I wrote her back and nicely repeated that she was too late and just needed to focus on the final. That was the end of it, but I was glad when the semester was over. In case anyone is wondering, yes she was very attractive. But I was in a committed relationship and would also never do anything that unethical. Please increase my grade from a C to a B. I'm on academic probation. And if I don't get a B, I'll be required to withdraw. If I am required to withdraw, my student visa will be revoked. If my student visa is revoked, I will have to return to my home country. If I have to return to my home country, I'll be forced into compulsory military service. If I'm forced into compulsory military service, I'll be sent to a border region Kashmir. If I'm sent to a border region, I'll be killed. And it will be your fault because you didn't give me a B. I struggle to live with the guilt. I am not a prof but I shared a name with one in our huge state school's business college who taught one of those large lecture hall classes. I got the usual I was out and need notes emails, which I kindly redirected to the real prof and disclosed the confusion to both parties. I got an email that I won't forget that was from a student asking for another chance at a test because he was too drunk to remember and had missed too much class up to that point. I emailed the guy back with something along the lines of lols you are so few but now, to which he never replied. I have always wondered what happened to him. My most outrageous email was from a graduate student who got a zero on a quiz. The quiz was online and available to the students for a full week. The student simply didn't do it by the deadline. She emailed me saying it wasn't fair that she got a zero because she forgot to take the quiz. I replied that all her fellow students had managed to remember to do it and I had reminded them in class to do the quiz. Her reply, you should have sent an email reminder to us. Although I didn't respond to her, my internal response was, I'm not your mom. Grow up and take responsibility for your actions. I will say, I take an online class, and I do wish that the system would generate a hey, stupid, the quiz ends in 24 hours and you haven't taken it yet email. The struggle is real sometimes. H my god, people, I do have a reminder set. I'm only a Tay 4 chemistry lab, but I try to take the time to relate to my students for the 3-4 hours I see them every week. I had a student a while back that worked hard, spoke intelligently, participated in class, and clearly had a chemical understanding that rivaled my brightest students. He was well liked by his lab partners, and overall just a good guy. Halfway through the semester, he started slipping in assignments. His quality of work took a nosedive. He started missing assignments, and was visible on the bottom end of an emotional scale in class. In spite of his efforts to hide it, I pulled him aside, and let him know that I'd accept any assignments of his as long as he got them, done by the end of the year, and if he needed to talk to someone, I was there. He never took me up on the talk, but he got all of his assignments in by the end of the year, and that was that. He sent me an email by the beginning of the next semester explaining the series of relationship and emotional issues that he'd been struggling with for the past few months. He talked about regrets he had for the semester, and then explained how thankful he was to have me as a Tay. Not because I made a huge impact on his grade, but because I came to help at a low point that helped him break the frustration. 
He said that life for him never stopped being great, but I helped him make it feel fresh again. It meant a lot. More than that, though, that I was able to help so much. TL. DR. Student had rough semester. I cut him a small break. It meant a lot to him at just the right time. Ooh I like this one. You're a good person. Not a prof, but was a TA. For him and we ended up being buddies after I was no longer a student. He had a girl that blatantly copied an essay. Like, it had that old time typeface from papers written in 1930. He showed everyone in the department. No one had to even read it to know it wasn't hers. Apparently she was also a subpar student at best and was in her 40s getting a degree most likely for a promotion. No judgment. Just saying the paper wasn't her at all ray content. The prof looked and looked and couldn't find it anywhere. So he had no other recourse than to give her a C for the class because he couldn't prove plagiarism. She was P. Kept insisting it was hers even after being confronted with the evidence. And then stalked him for years. She would call his home. Email him. Telling him she would ruin him and blah blah blah. Even after changing emails and phone numbers. Some people's kids. Man. I got kind of a reverse memorable email story. I once had a very minor surgery, less minor than having your appendix taken out. I wasn't even put under for it, just something that caused me to miss a few days of classes. Well we had a 5 person speech assigned to us the day I noticed something wrong. So I went to the clinic and they told me they would need to remove a cyst. Well it's painful and I have to wait 4 days to remove it, it was a Friday. So I miss almost all of this thing. I emailed the professor, she was from India, and I'm making up all of my work. Like I'm researching stuff and planning out a one person speech for 5 people because I think that's what it's going to take to make this up. She had announced to the class that I had surgery and would be out for the foreseeable future. Huge mix up of communication between me and her. At least that's what I thought. I was told by a few classmates afterwards that she made it sound like I was going in for a heart transplant. She sounded really concerned and told people to keep me in their thoughts. So when I came to class the next Friday, it was like a ghost returning. She acted like I had just gotten off the operating table. Why are you here? Shouldn't you be in bed? Absolutely one of the funnier moments I had in class and one of the nicest teachers I've ever had. That's adorable. I love professors that care about their students. I mostly teach introductory geology. One summer semester, I offhandedly said something about evolution in class. I don't remember how it got started exactly, but it touched off an ongoing email. And after class, dialogue with a Muslim student on evolution versus creationism. It was very enlightening for me because I had only ever encountered the Christian version of creationism. It was interesting to see the Islamic version. It was all very civil and mutually respectful. Both the student and myself learned a lot. Years later I got an email from this student. He told me about how our discussion had opened his eyes to his navy and it led him to learn more about science. He ended up majoring in environmental science and was working on his maze. He even had a question for me from a grad level sedimentology course he was in pertaining to Greywake. If I can get someone who's just in my class to fulfill a gen ed requirement to actually be interested in science, I feel I've done my job. Once every few years, I get a convert. A student who comes back and tells me they ended up in the earth or environmental sciences because of my course. But, getting a person to change from Islamic creationism literalism to pursuing a career in science. That was almost scary. When I wrote the student back, I told him that I hoped he had found room in his life for his faith and science. When I was a student, I got an email from a professor that said has missed a lot of classes this quarter, and she came to me to ask you on her behalf if anyone would be kind enough to share their notes with her. Here is her email address. If you would like to email her your notes, she would appreciate it very much. I feel like what happened was she went to the professor and asked for help, and in an attempt to get rid of her he just said if the other students want to give you their notes that's up to them. Teachers of Reddit. Who's the most clever cheater you ever saw? I wonder if my 10th grade history prof is a redditor? Well, Mr. Homer, remember how you let us roll the dice the day before a big quiz to determine if we got to use a cheat sheet on the test? Well the reason the class always let me roll was because I had loaded dice I would switch out while you weren't looking. I died reading this. I don't know why, but this got my goat. Not a teacher. 
but I'm going to tell my story anyways. In 9th grade, we had an English test that no one studied for. The day of, the teacher was sick. She had written instructions on the board. You may not use your phone, neighbor, or book. I erase the word not as a funny, stupid joke thinking the sub would say that's not right and tell us not to use our phone, neighbor, or book. The sub walked through the door, and it was Mrs. White. So Mrs. White is a contender for oldest woman to ever live. She is completely clueless. You could tell her that school ended at 10am today and she would pack up and go home. She handed out our tests, read the instructions on the board, and said get to work. No one questioned it. We discussed and googled every question. It would have been more clever if it was planned, but it worked out well. I'm discovering that the best way to cheat is to incapacitate the teacher and hope for an incompetent sub. I am a teacher, but I'd actually like to brag on myself. In a high school government class, I couldn't make the time to study for an exam. I decided to go get a pack of those iron on pages you could run through your printer and added the entire study guide to a graphic design that I applied to a colored shirt. I had my friend wear it to class the next day and sit in front of me. Profit. Not a teacher but a kid in my class plagiarized his entire area research paper, 10-ish pages. He found one online and copied it word for word. We had to submit it to this plagiarizing checking website. So in order to avoid detection he changed all of the letter is to the Russian character i as it is almost identical and just looking at them you can't tell the difference. So he passed the plagiarism test. No one knew until like a year later when he bragged about it. That website we used was notified about this cheat and they changed the algorithm or whatever so it wouldn't happen again. BTW, the Russian I is probably Ukrainian. Russian has Cyrillic letter E. Not a teacher, but I saw another student use it. He engraved the equations into the pencil without breaking through the paint. Unless you were up close, you'd never notice anything wrong with it. We had really dark brown desks in my school. If you wrote on them in pencil you could only really see it if the light hit the graphite at the right angle so I would just write Spanish translations on my desk in pencil before a test. In keyboard harmony class, one student thought he was fooling me on a test by using a MIDI playback of another student's performance. He moved his fingers over the keyboard pretending that he was actually doing the playing, thinking that I wouldn't suspect since I was sitting in the front of the room listening. Unfortunately for him, I recognized the other students playing immediately, sight unseen. Computer networking, CCNA, class through high school. Our teacher told us the final test was open note, however the notes had to be in a notebook so he knew we didn't print them out. I bought a spiral bound notebook, and unthreaded the spiral, put all the paper in my printer, downloaded the textbook in PDF form, copied every chapter summary into Word, and downloaded a handwriting font, changed the font, printed it out onto said paper, and rethreaded the spiral back into the notebook. Done and done. That actually sounds like more work than studying. Not a teacher, but my old youth group minister told a story once that's just too good not to share. He was in a Spanish class, and they were supposed to memorize a poem in Spanish and recite it for the class. He of course did not do this, and when it came time for the recitation, wasn't sure what to do. Luckily for him, though, one, they had a substitute that day who spoke absolutely no Spanish, and two, he was called to recite first, as he was walking to the front of the classroom, preparing for death, he realized something, he went to Catholic school, and they recited the Hail Mary in Spanish every single day, this genius went to the front of the room and recited the most passionate version of the Hail Mary possibly ever, while the non-Spanish speaking substitute was none the wiser, the sub loved it, and now everyone in the class now had to recite that instead of the poem they'd memorized, some of the smart kids were so freaking pee. I proctor a test on weekends. We recently moved the test site to a new location where it's virtually impossible for the people taking it to see each other's papers. But before this, they would double up at long tables and we had to be very vigilant about wandering eyes. At the old site, there was one guy who thought he was fooling me with his quick head turns, his fake stretching, and his big yawns that he'd used to steal a glance at his deskmates paper. Normally, I would have shut that down hard, but this time, I decided to let it go. Why? Well, this test has two versions. 
One is the version that you'd send to universities and colleges, and the other is what you would send to a current or prospective employer to show your proficiency in this area. These tests are completely, 100% different. Not one single question is the same between them. The cheater failed to notice that his desk mate was taking the other version of the test. I wonder if he ever found out why he completely bombed the test, or if he thought the guy he was cheating from was just really dumb. When I was in junior history there was this group of 4 bros that sat in the back and were, let's just say, not the most stellar of students. Our teacher suspected them of cheating so he made 4 different versions of the test. All 4 of them had the same answers. Our teacher ratted them out to the entire class lol. Not a teacher, but my high school health class had a system for cheating because our coach didn't give a single freak. My school had mandatory health class. Everyone hated it and it was basically a pointless say no to drugs class. Our teacher cared just about as much as we did to the point that he took out his hearing aids anytime he wasn't lecturing and we all figured out that he couldn't hear high pitched voices if you sat in the back. So, my class developed a system during tests, if coach C took out his hearing aids then one of the spotters in the first row would tap a rhythm onto the desk. Then what was basically the council of kids that knew what the frick they were doing, all sitting in the back row would figure out the answers, get them to the girl with the highest pitched voice, also in the back row, and she would quietly announce them. I'm all but positive that coach C knew what we were doing and just didn't care and that's why he was the best. In middle geography social studies type class we had periodic tests where we would have to identify every country in a given continent. We would be handed a blank map and each country would be numbered. And then we'd get an answer sheet with numbers and lines corresponding to each country. Write the name of the country that matches each number on the map. We had to keep taking the tests until we got them all correct. Simple system, right? I was really good at these tests. Until we got to Africa, which I just couldn't get down. I got like a 70% the first try, but again, we had to keep retaking it until we got them all right. I tried the honest way 3 times more, and just can't get there, so a friend of mine and I conjure up this complex plan to cheat the system. I act like I'm super angry about not being able to get the answers right on the test on my 4th time and crumple up the map into a ball before handing in my answer sheet. Telling the teacher I know I didn't get them all right. I brought a decoy crumpled up piece of paper and drop that's in his waste paper basket. We take the map home and dummy up an answer sheet that matches the one from class. We look up all the countries and write in the names. Being sure to put a few incorrect and scribble them out and put the right answer. The hardest part was transporting the phony answer sheet to school and then into the classroom without wrinkling it or folding it, which would be a dead giveaway. We did this by putting inside of our shirts, taped to the back of our collars, so they were flat against our backs. Halfway through we sit back and stare up at the ceiling and fold our arms behind the seats, acting like we were stretching our backs and pull the sheets out. Deftly slide them in the place of the real answer sheet, wait a few more minutes and turn them in. TL. DR. Can't remember the difference between Guinea-Bissau and Equatorial Guinea, so devise an Ethan Hunt level plot to cheat on geography exam. Me during those tests. Please get Australia. Please get Australia. Those mechanical pencils with the twist out erasers. Just write what you need on the side of the erasers in pen. Twist the eraser back in. Erase the answers off the sides of the eraser when the test is done. Did this for some absurd physics formula we had to memorize. As for ends. We were allowed to listen to our own music on test days in religion class, where we would usually have a memory test, memorize a bible verse and a part of the Lutheran catechism, and over half the class recorded the memory on their iPods or some other form and would listen to it as they did their test. Everyone else would just make tiny pieces of paper and read from that. By senior year there were maybe 3 people out of the entire class that did not cheat saint least once. That's so obvious. How did they not see that coming? Not a teacher but I was a student in Spanish class and one of my classmates hid some index cards under his sleeves. He was slick about it, he finished the test first but didn't think twice about the cards being under his sleeves. So he stood up and they all fell and he got caught. It was the most hilarious thing that ever happened in that class. I couldn't stop laughing at him so I got kicked out and had to retake the test after school lol. One of my Spanish teachers in high school was pretty clueless. 
She would always stand in the hallway between class times. One day she had the answer sheets to a test on her desk and someone wrote all the answers on the whiteboard. After the test they just got up and erased them. The teacher never noticed. When I was in high school, I was way ahead in math. We were allowed to use graphing calculators and I finished early enough that I typed all the answers in my TI-83 and turned my test in. For the first student I helped, I held the calculator up just right so the person behind me could read the answers and just hit random arrow keys so the teacher would think I was playing a game. I played Tetris in that spaceship game a lot. I then asked to go to the bathroom and drop the calculator at another desk came back and moved it to another. I had forgot I did this until the start of the next school year's math class when I found them still on the screen when I started the calculator again. The TI-83 were great. We had a physics exam and it was the same exam from last semester so we all put the answers in our calculators. Teacher found out when the average was like 95%. He made us do a university level makeup exam and the average was like 40%. How about this one? My computer science prof had a number of programming assignments for us. We were not supposed to share code. Prof announced that he had a special cheat detector program that he'd run on turned in assignments. He went on about how it could tell if you just changed variable names or reordered a few statements. My friends and I spent hours trying to think how to defeat the CDP. Which meant we had to deduce how it might work. Which meant we were thinking about algorithms and data structures on our own time. Prof C, you evil manipulative smug bastard. I salute you. He freaking taught you how to code by letting you cheat. That's some freaking Naruto Chunin exams crap right there. Not a teacher, but a TAFE or calculus I taught a recitation and gave quizzes during it. I normally didn't walk around but would sit at this elevated desk and sort of watch people. Since calculators weren't even allowed I wasn't too worried. About the fourth quiz of the semester I caught a student cheating by having his notes on a small piece of paper and hiding it under his quiz while taking it. What was clever about it was he always sat behind this very overweight girl on quiz days. And by doing so my view of him and his desk were completely obstructed by her. A uh, mass. Can I just get credit in this thread for actually being a teacher? To answer the question, I had a student who broke an arm and needed to take the test electronically. Caught him live streaming his test twitch. Not a teacher, but I had friend who would write things on top of her boobs. She wore a v-neck and would down at her chest to adjust her bra during the test. I've heard that one before, and if the teacher caught you, assuming male, they'd get in crap for looking at your boobs. I remember a method where people would ask for answers to multiple choice. Three hits on wood, would be question three. Two hits on metal, would be the answer B. Comma 150 question midterm. I was a peach eater. Usually I would finish all the questions I knew and memorize the questions I didn't know while I was waiting for class to finish. I told the teacher I didn't finish and asked for extra time and said I was only available the next day. I went home and memorized the answers and came back and aced the test. Another time I gnawed my lip and stored the blood in my mouth. Then fake coughed and spat the blood on my test and went to the clinic. I got a few extra days to study for that test. Much like 95% of this thread I'm not a teacher, but in one of my old college math classes, there was this Muslim girl who cheated on the final by having headphones and underneath her hijab and shirt with the formulas and step by, step procedures playing on her phone. Freaking brilliant. A girl in my electrical theory class did this, had bluetooth earphones and under her hair. Unfortunately the bluetooth wasn't connected when she started the playback, and her voice announcing test answers was played for the whole room to hear. Priceless. As a teacher, I write on the side and post to a large writing site for feedback. I use a pen name and don't have to worry about my more literate student as finding me. For some reason, middle schoolers are obsessed with learning about teachers in the real world. Go figure. Anyways, they have a 5 page. Long term writing projects due. I get to one student, let's call him Bob, turned in a 10 page work. I first congratulated him on going above and beyond when he was usually lazy beyond words. Fast forward a few days, and I'm grading papers. What do I see but a copy of my own work? 
college freshman year, the composition professor was telling a story about how when he was in graduate school, one of the other PhD, a candidates, who was teaching a course, caught a cheater because he plagiarized her MA thesis. He didn't know that he plagiarized the instructor only because she got married and changed her name. Not a teacher, but a fellow college student printed out his own label for the drink he normally brought to class, like vitamin water or something, with notes for the test we were taking in the ingredients section. We had kids do this at my school, but the idiots were so proud of themselves they stuck a photo of their masterpiece on Instagram and put the school name in a hashtag. The woman who runs our social media saw it pop up almost immediately. Not a teacher, but me and a group of about 20 students came up with a system to cheat our online final exam in college. The exam was 50 questions pulled from a 150 question pool to prevent this sort of cheating. We ended up splitting into groups to find each answer quickly, a lot of material to go through, copying each question and answer into a shared google doc, then updating the answer key if there was a discrepancy once the exam was turned in. We even had system to identify question we knew for sure were right, and ones that needed validation or were uncertain. Through our collaboration, I don't think anyone got lower than a 95%. In calculus class my senior year we had our midterm coming up and our teacher had to be away so the test was administered by sub. Perfect opportunity. The whole class got together and designed a t-shirt that had all the equations written on the front in a way that looked like it was just some nerd lingo trying to be funny. Think about writing a sentence using math symbols as letters. We all wore the same shirt and told the sub it was because we were all in math club and had a competition that afternoon and it was our uniform teacher got back and had no idea how the class average went from 70s on all our other tests to upper 90s. I teach kindergarten in Korean. There was a boy who had a history of putting his hands in his pants. I had been encouraging him for weeks to stop. This time it was different. While I was giving a quiz, he was just leaning back slightly and lifting up the waistband and peeking inside his pants. I thought it was odd, but at the time it wasn't bothering anyone, and it stopped after the quiz. He sat there for 3 more classes until it was time to go to wash up for lunch. He shuffled over to the trash can and discreetly tossed something inside. I looked inside to see that he had hit a sticky note with the spelling vocabulary words with their Korean English translation and the crotch of his pants. Not bad for a 5 year old. Not gonna lie, I was expecting this to go in a completely different direction. Not a teacher but I had two ways of cheating in high school. The first being writing formulas, etc tiny on a small piece of paper I could fold up and keep between my watch and wrist. I would casually slide it out and keep it under my forearm so nobody else could see it and it looked as though I was simply trying to prevent people from looking at my answers. The second way was by creating a program on my graphing calculator. It would take a week or so per class. Finals. But it was worth it. It looked inconspicuous in case a teacher checked so I could say it was something like a program to find the lengths of a side of a triangle but if you entered the secret code it would open up so you could choose a math or science section such as physics, calculus, etc with anything you could possibly need. By the time I was done programming and debugging though I knew all the information so I would sell it to my classmates. A friend went to a catholic school and girls would write notes on their thighs. No teacher is getting away with asking a girl to hike up her skirt. Kids would also write on their jeans in blue ink. Totally did the skirt thing in high school but I was in public school. Claimed I had a mosquito bite to my female teacher. Either she didn't care enough to bother to see if it was true or just accepted it cause I was a decent kid. Past biology though. Most math tests in high school really came down to remembering a couple complex equations. In school I always thought it was silly that I could sit at my desk with the textbook open, repeating the equations in my head over and over, right up until the test start, at which point I would close the book and scribble down all the equations onto my notepaper. I, I do this on every test, except I tend to forget sometimes right afterwards, my mind just goes blank. My 7th grade science teacher said he taught Morse code until he found kids blinking answers to each other. That just makes it sound like he was a successful teacher, especially if the kids were fully utilizing the subject in a practical application. 
World history was the notorious GPA killer in our school. Our section started right after lunch. When the midterm came around I hadn't studied hardly at all and was in jeopardy of failing. During lunch I went up to the classroom, which was locked. I slid as much mechanical pencil lead that would fit in the lock and went back to the lunch room. It took the maintenance man, we called them janitors back then, 15 minutes to take the knob off and open the door. The exam was rescheduled for Monday. Everyone had two extra days to study if they needed it. No one ever knew it was me, and somehow I managed my pride enough not to brag about it to anyone. I got a B. I teach ESL, and had a really clever cheater. I mean, she was really clever. She was doing great in the advanced classes, and apparently was acing all the English tests at her school. She was approaching fluency but had never lived abroad, her other subjects were no problem. She played piano, did ballet, as well as attending what little extracurricular academic clubs there were on offer in her area. But she cheated like crazy in class tests. And these were very crappy tests designed to prepare the kids for the style of the government exams. She would try sneaking glances in the book, at her phone, peeking at classmates papers and whatever else I missed. Every time I would have to talk to her and after the second incident we, Native Tay and I, talked to her parents about it and she just shut down right there. Kinda spooky. She was fine in class. And the cheating didn't stop until we had her do the tests one on one with a Tay. Still near perfect scores. I think she was just forced into being great. The kids here don't have much opportunity to be themselves, somewhere in Asia, and it's always a little sad when they say all they did during a holiday was eat dumplings and do their homework. Not a teacher, but I saw someone cheat on a math test once by having their answers from the smarter kid in class hidden in the lid of the calculator and the calculator got passed around since we didn't have enough for everyone. This is how I passed 10th grade geometry. And I on purpose got some of the answers wrong as to not arouse suspicion. We did this, but typed in formulas for each other in the TI-83. Not a teacher, but in high school it was required for us to wear school IDs on a lanyard. Whenever there was a vocab test, people would take a small post-it, write down the vocab words and the meanings, and put it on the back of their id. Never saw anyone get caught. With Bluetooth earbuds getting pretty inconspicuous now I've been thinking about the logistics of something like that. One of my physics profs in college told us about one kid that he had caught cheating before. We were allowed to bring one sheet of printer paper with equations on it for our midterms. This nerd used a laser cutter to slice a sheet of paper into two 0.02mm thick sheets so he was still technically using one sheet of printer paper. From that day on. Our prof had to specify one 8.5 inches x 11 inches x 0.05 mm piece of paper for equations allowed. A prof once allowed one side of an 8.5 x 11 sheet of paper. Somebody wrote on both sides and folded it into a mubbier strip. Back in the day we used to put chapstick along the side of the scantron. This kept the machine from putting down the pink line signaling you missed an answer. A kid got caught because he used flavored chapstick that you could smell the strawberry. During high school, 2006, our English final had over 250 vocab words. Teacher let us listen to music during the exam. The second gen iPod had only just come out and maybe 5 of us in the school had one. My friend recorded himself saying each word and its definition on his computer, then transferred it to my iPod. The class just passed the iPod around. Of course the teacher was lazy so the words were in the exact order of the study guide. So that's what chapstick does. I've heard that trick before, but I never knew how it worked. Not a teacher, but I will share my trick from high school. Those click pens with the rotating barrel saved me a few times, as well as the RSVP pens with the clear barrel. The pre-test setup, play with the pen during regular class to prep the teacher to get used to me fidgeting and clicking it as I took notes. RSVP pens always had a little drawing stuffed into them and I constantly twirled them in my hand so the teachers would think I was being different by using my art to claim my pens. Everyone in my school was using the RSVP pens at the time and I was well known for being very anal about my pens. The night before a test, 
I would tape a small piece of paper around the rotating barrel and write my notes in tiny print over the words so it would show when I clicked it. In the RSVP pens, a small section would have the notes I need and a cute little doodle that I would make sure was on top when I put the pen down. Teacher never suspected a thing because I had already set it up as a nervous habit even when they were walking the classroom looking for cheaters. Ex-teachers professors of Reddit, what was your frick this, moment? A female student I had disciplinary issues with accused me of hitting on her and making obscene gestures towards her. I'm an openly gay man and most of the staff knew this yet the district still put me on suspension while they investigated. They were able to prove she was lying but the district decided that the best course of action was to transfer me to another school instead of, you know, punishing the student. I quit at the end of the school year and got a job in banking. Dang. That is fricked up. A student had a mental breakdown in the library, smashed a wooden chair, and gouged a pencil in his arm while screaming that he wanted us all to go away, and I got dreamed out for not calling campus security before I called 911. I know you got dreamed out, but thank you for calling 911 and not campus security. Most will not do anything, you probably saved that kid. I had a student that copied off another kid during a test, I gave him a 0%. The parents came in to complain to administration that, since I hadn't explicitly said during the first day orientation that cheating wasn't allowed, it was an unfair punishment. Administration forced me to allow him an opportunity to retake the test. He never retook the test, and the grade of zero stood. Still, I was so disillusioned by the entire experience that I started looking the next day at college programs that I could use to transition away from public education. Proof that some that go into administration are wholly unfit, like it has to be explained that cheating is bad. Two weeks into my first year teaching 9th grade math I had a girl attack another girl for no reason in my class. She was grabbing onto her hair really tightly and I was trying to break it up. Another student tried to help me out and somehow the instigating student managed to punch him in the face and give him a bloody nose while still holding onto the other student's hair. Now what makes this story relevant is I literally said the words frick this while trying to break up the fight. Not loud. Not to a student. But just like frick this this I am not gonna let this happen in my class right now. Well. The instigating student decided to tell the principal that I was cursing at her. Despite the other students in the class supporting me and the fact that this student had a history of violence, I got a letter in my permanent file saying I had used inappropriate language towards a student. Frick that. Teaching taught me a lot but I couldn't do it for more than a couple years. Really respect those that make it their career. Schools alike. Kids fighting for no reason. No fricks given. Teacher whispers a cuss word while trying to stop that fight. WTFFF. How fricking dare you frick your career. When the principal told me one of my students mother was getting her secondary education certification so she could move up to teach HS. Math where her son was, so they wouldn't be renewing my contract to teach the following year, but, they were in need of a network administrator for the school district, and they were willing to pay me a teacher's 25k salary to do it, and I would be answering to each building principal, like a janitor, not to the superintendent, like a district, level admin. So they moved you from teaching kids to teaching servers. Going through my frick this moment right now. Been in special education since 2007. District I work in desperately wants teachers to start new classrooms due to overcrowding yet they don't want to hire the right people. They'd rather hire fellow locals from high school in the area who the admins know versus hiring qualified people from the outside. Our special education admin has zero spec ed experience and his replacement also has no spec ed experience. Not fun at all. The principal's niece made a B in my freshman geography class and she wanted me to bump it to an A. Because the child could not get into Texas A&M with a B in a freshman class on her record. This school also pressured teachers to fail no students. End of year assessing students to see who'd progress through to the second year. While assessing the work the department head came in and said we had to fail X amount due to facilities and resources for the next year. He then returned an hour later and said that due to the budget we actually needed to pass a higher number than originally thought. I completely ignored what he said and carried on marking on merit but it was the proverbial straw. 
when admin wouldn't let me take more than 4 days off after a close friend died unexpectedly. You're letting the kids down is a phrase I heard over and over again as I tried to reason with them. My girlfriend died. You're letting the kids down. I'm in the hospital. You're letting the kids down. I have terminal cancer and am bedridden. You're letting the kids down. Looks at your gravestone. You're letting the kids down. I failed a college student who never came to class and missed both the midterm and final exams. The influential parents complained to the school. The administration later went into the digital records and changed the fail to a passing grade without my knowledge. I found it out later. Third hand. Ergo, I refused to sign a second year contract they offered to me. That kind of thing can cause a school to lose its accreditation if reported. Caught a student cheating, but, stupid cheating, cheated off of someone else with the wrong answers and the same wrong spelling. When I spoke to him regarding taking a new test, generous on my part considering it should have been a zero per school policy, he refused and said I would be hearing from his parents. I, of course, did hear from them via my principal within an hour. Go to love kids and their phones readily available. Fast forward to a meeting with the student, parents, and principal. I had his test and the one from which he cheated. Upon showing this to the parents I fully expected them to understand and hold their son accountable. Nope. Instead, the parents demanded an apology from me for branding their son a cheater which would negatively impact him for the rest of his life. And also, it's the least I could do since they were paying my salary. When I said I would not apologize for catching their son cheating the father then said I was lucky I was a woman because otherwise he would punch me in the face. Nice. So, yeah, good times, glad I got my master's degree for that. Give me what I want or I will physically harm you. And the pattern continues with their son. When the prestigious high school I was working at focused on sports more than academics. On top of that, it turned out that the principal overrode teachers marks if they tried giving students a failing grade. Frick that. I was teaching middle school English while overseas in Europe when two students, a boy and a girl began viciously fighting after the boy made comments about the girl's mother. For most people, this would be easy to break up, but as a 5 feet 5 inches man lit, both the 13 year old kids had several inches and pounds on me, when I positioned myself in between them, they took a break from fighting each other to work as a team to push me over a desk, they then promptly resumed punching each other's lights out, I quit that week, when I positioned myself in between them, they took a break from fighting each other to work as a team to push me over a desk. At least you got them to work together instead of against each other for a second. That's an all around crap situation though. My mom retired as a special education teacher after a student bit her hard enough to draw blood. She had to get a ton of tests for everything from hepatitis to freaking rabies. She was fine. Thankfully. But that was when she decided that she'd had enough. She went on to sub for non special ed kids and eventually to do administrative work at a charity for ASD individuals. I feel for your mom. I worked at Target as one of their renter cops and got bit by someone we were restraining. It broke the skin. They sent me to the doctors and had to get a litany of tests. It's not fun. Kid poured gasoline under the door of my room after hours and lit it, burning most of the room. The facility guys worked all weekend to clean it up and paint it, hauling in new desks to replace those burned. Not long after that, I found out I could make more money with less hassle by waiting tables at the beach. Plus the beach has women in bikinis. I was gone a week later. You haven't studied for the test tomorrow, do you? A. Pretend to be sick and stay home to study. B. Guess the answers on the test. Comma C. Burn down the entire freaking classroom was substituting at a low income middle school for the day, about 40 students per class, just had a simple worksheet for them to work on every hour rotation, spent the day breaking up fist fights, chairs or desks being thrown across the room, students having screaming matches, students climbing and dancing on desks, students just leaving class during the chaos. I had 6 students turn in the completed worksheet for an entire day of class rotations. I realized I was no longer a teacher but a prison guard with less benefits and no way to defend myself. I guarantee 80% of these kids will end up dead or in prison before the age of 25. Never again.
Another one that resonated with me. Glad I'm out. So I was at a TAFE for a college course, Introduction to Information Assurance. One of the labs for the class involved performing a SQL injection. If you don't know what that means, just know that you have to build your input string carefully. The attack required a very specific input. Well this one student was getting frustrated and asked for some help. After looking at his input string, I realized he had it just right. Except he was missing a terminator on part of the input. Semicolons. Am I right? I pointed out the simple mistake and he didn't take it well. He smashed his own face on the keyboard, logged off the machine, thanked me, and left the class. I knew this level of teaching wasn't for me. I don't know what he's been up to, but I can't imagine a co-worker responding to bugs like that. Forgetting a semicolon can do that to you. I was a high school teacher with 7 years experience in my district and a master's degree. I was making 49 k This was 2013. I was talking to a friend who was in from out of town. This friend had barely made it through his bachelor's degree, even with a lot of help from him and other friends. Over dinner he was complaining about not getting a good enough raise, so he was only making $143 k at his software consulting job. He didn't do the technical stuff, more customer relations. I left teaching to make more money, I am, but it has taken a while, and I really miss working with the kids. Wish I had stayed in teaching. Edit. To be clear, I don't begrudge my friend a penny. Good for people who do well. During my student teaching, I was at parent-teacher conferences. I was speaking to a parent whose son was failing, mostly because he did none of his homework. She was angry with me and pretty much told me it was my fault. She asked me why I wasn't making sure he did his homework. I said, it is homework, meaning work you do at home. It is your responsibility to help him and make sure he does it. She complained about me to the teacher I was student teaching for. He warned me that teaching is very political and that parents can keep you from getting tenure or get you fired. Other teachers told me that this was the climate nowadays. Children are not held accountable and parents blame you for their lack of parenting skills. I decided that it was not worth it to finish the teaching program so I finished early with a degree in history and policy. The subjects I would have taught history and the social studies are X. My degree is pretty much useless but I still make more than a teacher does. I dropped from the teaching program and went ahead with a history degree. Also, I just tell people I majored in trivial pursuit. I work and teach in higher ed. I still teach online and had a student a few semesters ago who did hardly any work but asked for an exemption from all the work she didn't do. I had to reply and confirm she was asking to get a passing grade for doing no work because either I was just reading it wrong. There's an amazing amount of student entitlement that I didn't see 10 years ago. Sort of like I pay for a passing grade in this course instead of I pay for access to college level content. I think all the really great free resources online have changed the way they look at learning and we haven't kept up. A bit off topic, but I've recently been spending time at my kid's elementary school setting him up with an IEP. Just working with the staff and watching how fast paced it is really surprised me. I'd be in a meeting and suddenly a walkie would go off and they'd have to go out and handle a student issue and then come back to me. And that switching gears process is non-stop. And this might just be because I live in a relatively small town. But it seems like every teacher and staff member knows every kid's name and really seems to care. After spending years working with doctors trying to help my kid, it's the people at his school who've dramatically changed his, and our, life in just a few months. I know I couldn't do the work they do and we will be forever indebted to them for their intervention. I told this story last year, so you may have heard it. I was subbing for a class that integrated some of the special education students for 2 hours a day. We were having a holiday party, so the kids got to push their desks together and have snacks and watch a movie. I'm sitting at the desk grading papers when I hear the class getting kind of noisy. I ask what's going on and someone mentions that Trevor doesn't like this part of the movie. Trevor is a 12 year old boy on the autism spectrum. He's a very large boy, about 6 feet 0 and well over 200 pounds. I tell Trevor to come on over to my desk and he does. He says he doesn't like when people sing in movies and starts covering his ears. I tell him I will fast forward this part and he flips his crap. Apparently, he hates fast forwarding more than he hates singing in movies. 
He picks up a desk and whips it against the wall near a set of windows. Flips over every desk he can get his hand on all while screaming like someone is attacking him. He's just trashing the room and starts going after the kids. I yell for one of the kids to run and get his main teacher and another to get the principal. But Trevor pushes a few kids hard enough to make them fall down and then grabs a girl by throat and starts choking her. He has a look on his face of a madman and he's sweating profusely and turning red while this girl is trying to fight him off. I get over there and am able to pry his hands off with the help of a few students. Trevor then turns to me and in a crazy, deep voice says I will find your house and hide under your bed until you come home. I will rape and murder you and laugh while I'm doing it. His teacher came in and was able to pull him away and Trevor just stared at me the entire way out laughing like crazy. It was scary as frick. I was an adjunct, at the bottom of the totem pole, and got my class assignments last and only if the more senior people everyone had gotten their minimum number of classes. They'd hold off on this until the literal last minute, and I'd find out if I was teaching 3 days before the semester started. For the last 2 or 3 years, I was only teaching online and only in the summer. During that time I moved away and started a business, so it was all fine with me. The last summer, I got two classes I'd never taught before with about a month before they started. I had to learn a totally new subject for one, and remember stuff I hadn't looked at since grad school for the other. They almost took one class away from me after I'd busted my butt to prepare for it, because nobody else's classes were filling up. The other class had 6 people in it. I was told I could teach it prorated, for 6 stroke 11 of the usual rate, and I refused. I didn't have time to learn that stuff, teach 2 classes, and keep my business going. I was told I could teach it prorated, for 6 stroke 11 of the usual rate, and I refused, even for adjuncting. This is a new level of shitbaggery, you don't teach less just because there are fewer students in the class. My wife is a teacher, she started in the UK public sector, but left after 8 years. After a few months break, she went into private education. There wasn't any one thing that led her to quit. It was working in a system that, over 8 years, saw 3 curriculum changes, 2 exam changes, and 3 changes to the inspection process. A system that demanded more and more from the staff while cutting funding and freezing pay. Where she'd get to work at 7am and leave at 6 p.m., do some work at home, and spend almost every Sunday marking or planning or both, just to keep afloat, a system that was constantly narrowing its scope and becoming ever more inflexible, to the detriment of the children she was teaching, where her choice was either to teach her students to pass the exam, but deprive them of useful mathematical knowledge and critical thinking skills, or to teach them these skills but run the risk of them doing poorly in their exams. This would jeopardize not only those kids, but future pupils as well. Because poor exam results would bring the school's rating down, leaving it open to being taken over by an academy chain which would be even worse. It was a system that took an enthusiastic and excellent teacher, ground her down and stretched her so thin she basically had a breakdown and almost left teaching forever. I am the version of your wife who left teaching forever. Every single thing you've written. These are my exact reasons. I didn't make 8 years though. I didn't even finish my NQT. I've been making minimum wage ever since and I never regret it. My wife got contacted about applying for a job out of state. I encouraged her to do so. My thoughts were I have a year and a half of teaching experience and a master's degree in teaching from an R1 research institution. This will be easy. It was not easy. I was told I could not teach in the subject that I was fully certified and held a degree in my current state, despite reading stories about shortages and emergency certifications in my field. But I could probably make it work in another field if I took 6-7 classes. I now work another job that I don't really like though I can get those 6-7 classes for mostly free if I want them. The problem is starting over as a teacher, again, would be a decent sized pay cut, and trying to convince myself to deal with the overall low societal respect for teachers is tough when the whole process has just exacerbated my depression for 3 years. I have to. Early in my career, I had students who were plagiarizing lab reports. I turned them in, mostly because I felt I had to the school made a huge freaking deal about cheating and had an academic honesty pledge statement students wrote on every test. One set of parents screamed at me over the phone. 
Next thing I know, I had a meeting with the vice principal who said they didn't want the cheating to interfere with the student's future and he ripped up all the plagiarism reports I wrote that year. My second time saying frick this was based on the cumulative effects of being unsupported by the school. They changed which courses I was teaching, and the grade level. We had a construction project going on so there was constant noise, including beeping and drilling. Even when they promised it wouldn't be during the school day, that was a lie. Stupid school-wide initiatives. More pointless meetings. Incompetent high-ups. It's the adults in the system that make it hard to be a teacher. The kids are generally not the problem. I left during the first month into spring semester at a poor rural high school. It was my first year teaching. Went from professional life to teaching through a state program. Absolutely no support from the administration. One class had over 30 students. Another had half the class as troublemakers who would not calm down. Had a bomb threat. A gun found on a kid. A student death, and a teacher fired for an inappropriate relationship with a student all before Thanksgiving break. A quarter of the teaching staff was new, two people in my department had already left, several teachers had already quit, and the interim principal and administration were refusing to help teachers with anything, and actually blamed us. I'm trying to hang on, I'm hating every day of my life, and I'm thinking that all I need to do is make it through one year and I can do something else. Then early February, the principal calls me in and tells me that he thinks that I'm not a good fit, and at the end of the year I will need to go to another school or I will be terminated. In the real world, you don't tell someone you're fired but stay on for a few more months and then expect them to stick around. I was out of there and thankful for it, although it hurt to abandon my fellow teachers and the students. Also, I had one teacher of the month during the fall semester, so I couldn't have been that bad. They had done this because I refused to fill out a slip of paper indicating if I would be staying on for next year. This was basically, verbatim, my second year teaching. I left in February and believed I was done with education. Two years later I got a job teaching overseas and love it. Amazing how much admin impacts your life. Good riddance. I caught a kid selling drugs in the hallway and turned him in. He threatened to kill me with an ice pick. He was super unstable and volatile, and had a criminal record, so I didn't doubt that he might try it. The principal refused to remove him from my class because he has the right to have an education. My other students took it upon themselves to escort me through the school in between classes and walk me to my car after school in a big huddle so Ice Pick Boy couldn't get to me. Frick that. It's nice that your other students were nice enough to do that. I started teaching in 2008 when everything went to heck. I skipped student teaching and was hired as an intern. Got fabulous reviews, was loved by the kids and admin, and found out mid-March I was being laid off with about 150 other teachers in the district. Got rehired two weeks into the next school year, even though they knew about the position for the entire summer, at a different school. Did great there. Got their computer based instruction class up and running while still teaching English. Got laid off that March. It broke my heart and they once again offered me another different school that was an absolute heck hole. I left and worked other jobs for years. Moved around. Enjoyed my 20s. Met my now husband and came back to teaching. My old district happily hired me again. And promptly laid me off again. Then hired me on a temporary contract which was illegal but my union was so worried about getting raises that year they didn't care or help. Finally got tenure in that district and ended up getting a job offer at a much better district and left. I've been teaching 7 years and only one of those years I didn't have to completely take down my classroom at the end of the school year. Luckily my new district does everything it can to not have to lay off and I just got my tenure. A kid stabbed himself. On purpose in his hand during a speech. Two things destroyed me. One, the kid was suspended over a weapons violation. To wit, hey, obviously self-destructive kid desperate for attention. Go be alone in your house for a week. And two, the administration demanded I explain why I hadn't seen this coming. Since he had signed up to do a speech on how to bandage your wound. So clearly his maniacal plan was to shove a small pen knife through his hand while in front of the class. Like you do. Driving school teachers. What are the most outrageous things student drivers have done while with you? I used to work as a receptionist at a driving school and got to see the before and after for students and their parents. 
so many stories but the two that come to mind that always flabbergast me were. 1. A mom telling her daughter to always go 10 miles under the speed limit no matter what right before her driving test. So if the speed limit is 25, she should go 15 and so on. I had to explain that unless conditions required her to go slower than speed limit, weather, traffic, etc. She becomes more of a hazard if she is going under speed limit all the time. I'm all for driving safe but there are better ways to go about it. 2. The girl who got in an accident on her driving test that she caused, I believe she ran a red that had been red for a while and hit a car that had right of way, in front of a cop. She didn't understand why she failed and tried to argue about it and schedule an appointment for the same day to retake. I know a guy who used to give the final exams for people contesting suspensions of their driver's license with the DMV. He had horror stories to tell me about how bad drivers were. He had multiple stories about students not even making it out of the parking lot before failing and losing their licenses permanently. But the best was when a woman was backing out of the parking space took quickly and hit a car behind her. He turns to the driver and tells her to park back in the space. She guns it and hits the DMV building itself. She then turns to him and asks did I pass. He said it was the shortest test of his career. I had an instructor who was famous for never using his teacher's brake. Even when he should. I was riding in the backseat when another student was merging onto the freeway for the first time. The kid is looking over his shoulder and concentrating. 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 He's determined to make the merge and never looked forward as he accelerated down the ramp. We drifted off the side and hit the snowbank at 50 miles per hour. Snow was roaring over the hood, and we ground to a stop buried to the top of the windshield, with an orange student driver sign sticking out the top. The kid was shaking and gripping the wheel with white knuckles when the teacher says, as calmly as can be, you ought to look forward once in a while when you go down the ramp. Dang, that instructor was committed to proving his point. I'm not an instructor, but occasionally babysit new drivers, trucks and buses. In the UK, part of the larger vehicle tests are conducted in a yard before leaving to do the on-road part of the examination. These parts are observed by the examiner from outside the vehicle, and include a reversing exercise and an emergency stop. In short, bus, test candidate knocked over the examiner during the emergency stop, sending him and his clipboard flying a few meters onto tarmac. Luckily he was not seriously hurt, but everybody from then on used to make an exaggerated stand the heck back motion whenever this part of the test happened. <laughs> Nearly had my left foot peg taken off by a red Porsche 911, which was weaving through traffic at high speed on the highway during my final motorcycle license exam. I figured I insta failed because I was changing lanes into him, and an unsafe lane changes grounds for failure. I did shoulder check before changing lanes but the dude was going so fast he wasn't in my line of sight yet, I passed. When I took my driving test, about 50 years ago, we had to parallel park. It was the last part of the test. The testing station was in a strip mall that had some cars parked parallel along the edges. The tester told me go ahead and do the parallel parking portion. I did it between two of the cars parked along the edges only after I successfully parked did the instructor say, you were supposed to do it between the orange cones over there. But you were doing so well I thought I'd just let it go. Well, if it works it works. I used to live in Paris as a teenager. People there drive wildly. I was taking the final exam. I was super focused on not making mistakes, when some crazy driver just purposely missed a stop sign and rushed in front of me. The examiner had to do an emergency brake, which usually is a major mistake. I thought that's it, I'm fricked, and then he opened the window, flipped at the other car while yelling some rich words at him, then calmly told me Parisian about holes. Continue please and I passed. Student ran over a grey squirrel. Stopped the car. Got out and got it. Brought it back to the car and asked if she could bring it to her veterinary's office. My first behind the wheel. My instructor tried to tell me that if I were faced with a squirrel in the road and in a lot of traffic. I should run over the squirrel to avoid an accident. I told him that I hated that idea. So he told me I could instead keep good distance from the cars behind me to try to give myself time to break for squirrels. My instructor told us of a girl who drove into a mural, a La Willy Coyote, because one of her eyes was legally blind and she thought it was the road. 
Turns out depth perception is important after all. Not a teacher but one time in a driver's ed class this girl was driving and ran over a loud, clunky manhole cover that thumped. She was always nervous when it was her turn to drive. I guess she didn't see it coming because she screamed and goes what was that? The teacher looks back and goes oh god it's a dog. Oh god he's flopping. We gotta go back and finish him off. Stuff like that while the girl descends into a kind of jittery sobbing. Anyways, she threw up in our school driver's ed car and we had to keep using it anyways. A whole spring semester of puke smell in 5th period. I couldn't help but laugh at that. We gotta go back and finish him off LMAO. I had a student so excited to drive that when he opened the door to get in he hit himself in the forehead with the door and cut himself so bad I had to drive him to the hospital to get stitches. Same thing happened to me once going into a library. I taught mostly foreign students studying in the US. I have lots of stories. The first is about a mid 30s woman from Bangladesh. We are driving around a suburban neighborhood getting acclimated to making 90 degree turns. Pretty low key not scary stuff. Her phone rings so she stops in the middle of the road to reach her purse in the backseat to answer her call. I informed her she must first pull to the side of the road as you cannot just stop in the middle of the street. She told me I could not tell her what to do. The second one was a woman in her late 20s from Saudi Arabia. She was graduating college in 3 weeks and wanted to go home with a DL as women could not drive in her country. I go to pick her up and I ask the standard, have you ever driven before? She replied she knew what she was doing. 3 minutes in I ask her again because she was performing like this was her first time behind the wheel. She then stated that she had watched her family driver many times from her vantage point in the back seat. I made her pull over and I drove her to an empty parking lot. She was just not getting it after about 4 actual hours in the car with me on multiple days but she insisted I take her to the licensing bureau for her driving test. I had no choice but to take her even though I knew she would fail. They call her name and off she goes with the testing person. 7 minutes later the tester walks through the door and straight up to me. She said the woman had about taken out a school bus and that she, the tester, had to grab the wheel to keep them out of the ditch. I was asked for advance warning if I ever returned with such a bad driver. Now I'm curious what the fatality rate is for driving instructors and exam proctors. My driver instructor once, clearly hung over, but on a Pink Floyd CD and had me drive around country roads for 50 minutes while he had a nap. I've got a similar sort of one but on my actual test. She entered the car completely stinking of weed and ice where she wasn't even paying attention to my driving. Every time I looked over she was fricking about with her pen or the air conditioning. She still failed me lol. I was the student. During one of my 3 hour lessons, where we usually would take the highways out to the city, the instructor told me to pull into a bank parking lot. He goes inside and leaves me there for 45-50 minutes. He finally comes back and says sorry, I lost my debit card last week and needed a new one. Then tells me that we'll have to extend my lesson by an hour to make up for it. I told him that wouldn't work as I had a shift at work and extending the lesson would make me late. I get that banks have horribly short hours, but that doesn't mean you screw over the 16 year old who spent 5 months saving for your dang driving school to get there while they're open. That hour I lost never did get made up on another day. Also the dude had no clue how to teach parallel parking and I almost failed that portion of my driving test following the way he showed me. My brother. Good lord my little brother. He has always been just a touch slower when learning the important motor stuff. He didn't learn to ride his bike until he was in high school and he took 3 or 4 tries to get his license. One scenario that best comes to mind is when he wanted to go get Dairy Queen. He offered to pay if I just sat in the car so he could practice driving. Now it's important to note I was already a little strung up because I had just been a passenger in a car accident shortly before and was dealing with the aftermath of it emotionally, but it was free Dairy Queen so I agreed to go. My god. My life flashed before my eyes. He drove way too fast everywhere. We live in the suburbs with kids running around, and stopped just a hair short of rear-ending every single car in front of him at red lights. And then, M. Fair decides to just casually take a right on a left light. We're in America. We do a lot of weird crap but that's not one of them. When I asked him why, he said he forgot he couldn't do it. I demanded he stop the car and let me drive. 
We did not get ice cream and I was banned from driving with him ever again. So I won one. It's right on red. Always right. When I was taking the test for my license the teacher was a good high school friend of my dad's. Him and I were talking about all the fun memories they had and how my dad was a trucker so he taught me a lot about driving and specifically trailers. We both were so focused on the conversation we didn't realize we had gone 25-30 minutes down the road and still had to go back. We laughed and I apologized to my grandma about taking so long. I passed my driver's license in Inglewood, CA. I was not very familiar with the neighborhood. They just happened to have a space for exam appointment. I pull up to an intersection, and then a random car starts to do donuts in the middle of the intersection for a couple of minutes. The instructor was unimpressed. She just told me to wait and to go once they were done. Inglewood, CA. Then a random car starts to do donuts in the middle of the intersection. That checks out. The most terrifying one I've heard of was from a colleague. Like me he takes drivers out to familiarize them with new routes, procedures etc. In this instance the vehicle was a 38 ton wagon. About halfway though the training trip, the guy just freezes solid, literally mid sentence. Truck is going around a curve, and they end up on the opposite side of the carriageway, getting dodged by oncoming traffic. By a miracle, nothing gets hit and a few seconds later he snaps back awake and veers back over to the correct side of the road. Needless to say, they stop, clean out their underwear, and my buddy takes over. Turns out he'd had a seizure, and once diagnosed had his truck license revoked. Had no medical history of anything prior to this happening. I'm not a teacher, but I remember once in driving class a classmate of mine accidentally drove and flew through a fence straight onto the open road. Thankfully there was no one there at the moment or that could have been catastrophic. Not a driving teacher, but the lady who taught me, 30 years ago, was telling me that when she was taking one of her students on an on-ramp for I-95 the kid didn't actually turn to keep up with the ramp and just general lead them off the on-ramp. I was a student. At 16, I had a very bad undiagnosed and untreated anxiety disorder. I was absolutely terrified to get behind the wheel with the thought of being the one responsible for operating a two-ton killing machine. I let the instructor know this, and thought maybe we'd ease into it with empty parking lots and back roads. No, that wasn't the case. Daryl decided it would be best to take me right into rush hour traffic on the highway through town. At one point, I turned right too early and panic took hold. I floored it and Daryl had to hit the brakes before we went through a fence. I left some pretty impressive scorch marks on the road. The next 20 minutes consisted of me hyperventilating and crying while he vainly tried to comfort me. He ended up driving me home. Our next lesson started in the empty parking lot of an ice arena where I worked on making turns. As someone has pointed out in a past thread, immersion therapy only works if the patient is wholly comfortable and in control of the situation. Simply throwing them into the situation they fear most is only going to make their anxiety worse. I'm a police driving instructor, so I teach new recruits emergency operations of police cars. I don't have any great stories personally, however when I was at the academy as a guest instructor once, I witnessed something pretty crazy. It was the first day that the recruits were going to run at high speeds with lights and sirens. The way that it works is that an instructor is always in the car with the recruits. I watched as a car driven by a recruit made the turn onto the beginning of the course. The lights and siren came on and the car accelerated down the road. At the end of this road there is a stop sign at a T intersection. And on the other side of the intersection is some grass and then the forest. You are supposed to stop, clear the intersection, and turn right. The car kept accelerating toward the intersection longer than what we were used to seeing. But I thought maybe this was just a particularly aggressive recruit. Most of them are more timid on the first few runs. However the car was way past where they normally start slowing down. And looked like it was going to blow through the intersection. When suddenly we see the car veer to the right and spin out into the grass. We then see the instructor and the recruit get out of the car and the instructor is yelling and cussing at the recruit. They switch seats and come driving back to the staging area. The instructor gets out and meets with the head instructor. He explains that as they approached the intersection and he began to realize that the recruit was not stopping he looked over and saw that the recruit had a glazed over look on his face. 
kind of like a 1000 yard stare. He started yelling at the recruit to stop, but the recruit was not reacting at all. Realizing they were about to run through the intersection and go into the woods, he grabbed the wheel from the recruit and put them into a spin. When he asked the recruit what the heck happened, the recruit said sometimes, when I get stressed, I kind of halfway black out. That was the end of the recruit's law enforcement journey, as that tray is not very compatible with the career. I had a co-worker driving instructor in South Australia who had trained drivers for 30 years longer than me, and I asked him what is the worst driver you have ever had, Paul, right away he told me but I forget her name. She was a little Asian woman who was very nice but would get transfixed behind the wheel. She never spoke just nodded and never seemed to take anything in or change her bad habits. She had over 50 driving lessons before Paul gave up on her. He said one time she ran someone over. I asked what happened and he said we were approaching a roadworks where the guy was standing with a stop sign and cones. And she pulled up and was first in line. She went too close to the guy with the sign and he seemed a little uncomfortable. The car has signs she is learning. So he gave me the thumbs up with a concerned face like is it alright? I gave him the thumbs up and confident nod yes it's fine. Don't worry. I explained to her she must pull over slowly to the other side of the road and turn away from the guy and cones. I kept asking her if she understood and she would nod. Eventually the man turned his sign around and she floored it straight at him. He fell on the hood and grabbed the windscreen wipers. He was screaming and I was screaming at her while applying the passenger brake. At this point she was staring blankly ahead as if she weren't there and yet accelerating the car as much as she could. Foot to the floor. Transfixed. This is a true story. Thankfully I never had someone as bad as that. I certainly have had my experiences with mental illness before but frankly that sounds like somebody looking at the world trough a tiny pin. My driving instructor actually was outrageous. It was my first driving lesson with an instructor and it was going fine. Besides the instructor not saying a word. I was stopped at a stop sign and someone hit us from behind. She starts screaming. God freaking damn it and gets out of the car to check the damage. It turns out that she actually was the driving instructor for the person that hit us. After she did whatever with the person that hit us. She throws open the driver door and says. Just get out. I'm going to drive now she then sped back to my house and said we were done for the day. This being my first time driving with an instructor. I had to wonder what it was that I did wrong. She passed me off to a different instructor. On the sheet that he was reading. I saw that it said, he is a really bad driver, be careful, in huge red letters, but I had no problem with the new instructor and didn't make a single mistake, he said that he had no idea what she meant by me being a bad driver, a couple years later, the instructor was in the news for being arrested for a DUI, everything made sense then. Not the instructor, but the student, I took my driver's ed course, rode with the instructor, everything went well. Then as I'm driving back to my house, he starts asking me questions about being saved by Jesus. Turns out, he was a born again Christian and would use his position to try and speak with kids and their parents about converting to Christianity. Well, jokes on you, I grew up Presbyterian, which as far as I've figured out, means that if you've got to mow the lawn on a Sunday morning, you skip church. My parents were not amused when we got back to the house. Couple years later, he got arrested for child molestation. So that's that. Well that jumped from 0 to 100. I'm not going to lie. I scrolled these answers looking for a story about myself haha. <laughs> when I was 15 I couldn't parallel park to save my life in the parking lot with the cones. After a few practices I'd yet to get it. Even once. I just started screaming and floored it. I ran all the cones over just screaming at the top of my lungs. The instructor made me get out of the car, write the cones, I was dragging one under the car, and have a smoke or something, I won't tell you mom, haha, <laughs> I did just that and we resumed driving after I promised to never to that again. Fun fact, half my life later I'm the designated parallel parker of my friend's family, I absolutely can get that large vehicle into that little space, I'm sure I scared the pee out of that man that day though, teenagers are wild, I was no exception. I ran over the instructor's foot while parallel parking. No idea why he didn't move. I was going super slow. 
Not a teacher but years ago when I was taking my driving test it was snowing so I was wearing really big boots I was not familiar with. My foot got stuck between something and the gas pedal. Instructor had to slam on the brakes while I was holding it at wide open throttle. Did an amazing first burnout. Now I drag race. Fecking ripper. This is the opposite of what you asked but kind of related. I tried to turn left on a red and my instructor yelled at me and slammed on the brake. Here's the story. My driver's ed instructor was notoriously awful. She used to smoke in the car. She didn't explain anything. She barely taught anything. She, on more than one occasion, fell asleep in the car while on test drive with students. So, little 15 year old dumb butt me driving along doing fine, stopped at a red. It had an advanced phase where cars were going through on a red and arrow, I think. So I ask my teacher if I can go on a red, no arrow anymore. And she sort of mumbles, what I thought was yes. So I start to go and I'm like half in the intersections before she comes back to life and screams what are you doing and slams on the brakes. I tried to explain that I'd asked and she just yelled at me and told me to finish the drive back to school. Freaking hated the way she taught. During my driving test for my license the first time I went to make a left after a stop sign and the instructor pulled the e-brake because there was a car about a quarter of a mile down the road coming towards me and then he failed me. I was so pee off. This car literally would have taken 20 seconds to reach the intersection I was turning from. Driving school student. My teacher used to comment on every single attractive female he saw walking down the street, including teenagers. Then he'd get mad at me for not joining and feeling uncomfortable with it. Bruh you're like 40 talking about my classmates tight butt. Not a teacher but I was a terrible student. I came to the US for school when I was 20. You can have someone to teach you at that age instead of getting into driving school. My boyfriend at that time was teaching me. We went on a straight road once and I did pretty good. So he assumed I had leaned the basic back in my hometown. No. He was so wrong. The next lesson was on a busy road with traffic. And I was told to take a left turn. I was also being stupid trying to impress him. So I didn't tell him I actually had no idea how to turn at all. When car kept coming. He grabbed my wheels and I panicked. We ended up drove straight into someone truck and I destroyed his new jeep. Yep, lesson learned. Don't overestimate it yourself and get a professional to teach you. This wasn't too bad, but I was a very nervous driver, still am. In part because I was involved in a wreck about a year before learning to drive. Day of my test is like the hottest day of summer. The state instructor gets in the car and tells me to head out, and it's lunchtime so it's a rush of everyone trying to get to the fast food places on their short one hour breaks. I had been waiting to take my test for a good hour or so so my car is hot as heck, and I'm not too nervous to ask if I can turn on the AC. A reasonable request, right? Well that's when I learned the AC in the used car I had bought had gone out and only blew hot air. The instructor about pitched a fit. The rest of the test went well though. Only got marked off for one thing. Forgetting to use my turn signal when pulling out of a parallel parking spot or something like that. I'm going to flip this. I was the student and it was the teacher who did the outrageous thing. It was near the end of our training and it was time to merge onto a highway. The town we were in had nice, long, straight merge ramps with good visibility for the lane you were merging into. So I start down the ramp. I shoulder check 2-3 times and pick the spot I'm going to merge into. There wasn't very much traffic coming. The only car in the lane I wanted to merge into was several car lengths back. So I pick my merge spot and adjust my speed so that when I merge into the lane, I'm still 4 cars lengths ahead of the car on the highway. Things are looking good. Just as I reach the end of the merge lane, right before I'm about to merge, my instructor slams on his brake and brings the car to a complete stop. He braked so hard it threw everyone in the car forward in their seats. We are now sitting at the end of the merge lane, completely stopped. I lost it on him. I yelled at him why did he do that? He told me I was going to hit the car on the highway. At that moment, the car passed us, which proved I wasn't going to hit it. There were three other students in the back seat. They all told him there was no way I was going to hit that car and commented that he could have killed us had there been a car behind us on the on ramp. We had to sit there at the end of the merge lane until the highway was completely clear so I could finally get on the highway. We had two more lessons after this. 
He never took anyone else on the highway, but did pass us all. That's actually how the only ever death at my driving school occurred. Students wanted to merge on the highway but got scared and made a full break. Truck coming from behind didn't see and flattened them like a pancake. Teachers, what's the worst case of no? Not my child you've ever seen from a parent who's been called in for their kid's behavior? There was a kid in my class whose father was a Wall Street banker and his mom was a doctor. Basically, the kid's parents were never around. This kid was the freaking worst. He would stick tacks on other kids' chairs when they got up to blow their nose or sharpen their pencil. I caught him rifling through other students' lunches one morning and he had a pack of Twinkies in his hand. I told him to put the Twinkies back and sent him to the principal. One time he was having a beef with some other kid and waited for the kid to use the bathroom, followed him in, and punched him in the gut. There are no security cameras in the bathroom and he didn't leave a mark. So nobody could really prove anything one way or the other. During parent teacher conference I told his mom that her son needs to stop playing poker on his Apple Watch during class as well as some other proven behavior problems. She flew off the handle and said how dare you accuse my son of doing that stuff. You dumb broad. The conversation explained a lot about where he got it. My wife's aunt was a nanny for two kids whose parents were both doctors. They were never ever home and she did her best to raise them. Problem was that she was the only discipline they ever got because when they were with the parents, they wanted everything to be sunshine and roses so they never got onto the kids. Big shock. Both kids are little shoots. A 4 year old boy in my class was picking fights on a daily basis and would lash out at teachers that tried to intervene. Punching. Kicking. Throwing chairs. Screaming at the top of his lungs. He was being raised by his grandma who was thoroughly convinced that everything we told her was exaggerated or that the other kids were the ones starting the fights. When I was 6 months pregnant, he was mad that outside time was over, so he pushed me with both of his arms right in my belly. When I told his grandma, she asked if I was having a girl, I was. She chuckled, he's fighting with her, because boys and girls don't get along it'd be a miracle if that kid doesn't end up in prison. I really hope your pregnancy baby wasn't harmed by that. She said her child was only acting out not doing work because he's being influenced by the satanic imagery in our classroom. Then she pointed to the Coco poster on the wall. Not a teacher, but my wife volunteered at the school store where kids could buy erasers, pencils, etc. Two older girls repeatedly came in and stole things, on camera, while she was working. She reported it and they called the girls and the parents in, told them what happened and they said their children wouldn't do that. Then the school showed the parents the video and the parents still claimed their children wouldn't steal, all while watching it happen on video. They were banned from the store and the parents actually said that the school was just being racist because their daughters wouldn't steal. I've worked retail for years and this is very common with adults who shoplift. We'll have video evidence and people will still deny it. They probably had parents that did this and they never grew out of it. The best ultimatum we give is you can either give the stuff back and never return or we can hand this video over to the cops and you can try to convince them this isn't you. Three kids in a four stroke five split didn't like one of their teachers. During journal time they decided to get together and drew a picture of that teacher, surrounded by penises and the words, teacher, sucks dongs for money, obviously. The teacher found it and showed the principal who called the parents in. These were 10 stroke 11 year olds. Two girls and one boy. The parents of the girls were mad but the mother of the boy refused to believe it was him. She went back and forth with the principal completely denying her son's involvement until the principal finally had enough. Slammed her hand down on the book and yelled it's in his journal. And the little genius signed his name. The little genius makes this story. I really hope that was actually said. Many years ago I had this awful boy in the next class with a girl that was not at all there. I was the teacher next door. They were about 7. One of the boys was basically banging the girl up against her desk from behind very hard and it was hurting the girl. So he'll pull back a bit and then slam himself as hard as he can against her butt as she's bent over a table. These kids are 7 so who knows what's going through their head. I'm not implying anything. Shout it stop. They stopped. Then I told their teacher. That's all I did. Teacher wrote a note home. Parent comes in livid. Shouting at everyone saying I scared the kid. Doesn't matter what their kid was doing. 
If I ever say anything to the kid again they'll get me fired. Boss watched the video cleared me of wrongdoing. Notes the kid had been abusing that girl for a while before I got there. Told the parents. She didn't give two fricks. Railed on about how I traumatized her child by yelling stop while her kid was assaulting a mentally handicapped girl. Holy crap. I literally just quit my childcare job because a parent said I scared her child by raising my voice at him for stealing a toy and playing keep away from another child several years younger than him. Unfortunately, my boss took the side of the parent. I am glad your boss was on your side. A kiddo tried to bite a classmate and his dad flipped out. These kids are between 1 and 2.5 at this point so some biting is par for the course. It's a really common behavior that can come from a lot of causes. Teething. Frustration. Affection. So seasoned toddler teachers don't generally panic. I like to give families a gentle heads up if I notice their kid attempts a bite, even if it's unsuccessful. This starts the conversation early so if they manage to bite someone and leave a mark, it's not as shocking since I'm required to do paperwork when someone causes an injury. This usually works really well at helping families know that I'm not kicking their kid out or punishing them for biting. But this dad lost it. He claimed his child has never bitten and would never do that, and accused me of teaching letting him learn to bite. No level of talking about his child's positive behaviors or the science behind biting helped. He started making demands that I punish any child who bites to discourage the behavior. We didn't get along well for the rest of the year. He never bit. But if he did it was totally your fault. Clearly he'd been around toddlers too long and was thinking like them. I had a boy, 8 or 9 at a time, in my classroom who would spit at the girls, pinch other kids and generally was not very social. When I told his mother that he was not paying attention during class and runs around and distracts other pupils even though I and they told him several times to leave them alone, she wouldn't hear it. She just answered that he must be up during class BC he is so helpful. In her opinion the boy wasn't distracting the others, he was helping. She wouldn't hear any of the other things I told her simply ignored it then she complained that there was too much homework and that it was too difficult because she couldn't do it for him anymore at that point i just wtf'd in my head and hoped for the conversation to be over soon esl teacher in korea i was called back to the private school late at night an angry mother was there through a korean teacher she was livid i called her daughter a thief for stealing some felt markers i told her the daughter had the pens on her admit to having the pens and then I showed her the CCTV where my back was turned, and she grabbed the pens on her way out. The mother insisted the daughter didn't take them. She took them outside and gave them to a boy who took them, even though she still had the pens in her bag. By that time I had enough. Told her to leave. She argued. Said something rude in Korean and she scurried away. I am 6 foot and 200 pounds. Huge in Korea. Then my boss broke down in tears. Apparently the mother was hitting my boss before I came in. I didn't know. I said if that ever happened again for any reason, call me and I'd be there in minutes to throw whoever out on their ear. As a Korean, I am kind of shocked to hear this story but honestly there are dickhead helicopter parents in every culture. Spanish teacher here. One time a kid used Google Translate and did English French and tried to hand in his paper. He was such an idiot that he didn't even realize it was in French instead of Spanish. The parents would not accept that their son used a translator. Not me, but my wife who is a teacher. The first year my wife was teaching she was in a middle school teaching a foreign language. One student was very smart, but very lazy. He wouldn't turn in a thing, but would get an A on every test, so overall he had a very average grade. But one day the student's dad walked into my wife's classroom. The dad started by introducing himself and told her that he was on the school board. He to her that his son was so special he shouldn't have to do homework. His reasoning? His son was so special that he had been accepted to a summer program at Ziz University. He was quick to point out that Ziz was one of the top 10 rated universities in the US. As such, he was clearly too smart for her to understand, because they don't let just anyone into Ziz. So clearly she should let the son not do the homework. My wife graciously listened, but, the guy hadn't done his homework either, you see, my wife graduated from Ziz University, almost no one goes into teaching who graduates from there, but she fell in love with it, 
So she had the great pleasure of telling him she graduated from Ziz. And she saw plenty of smart people come to Ziz University who were brilliant, but didn't do the assignments or study much. And how every single one of those people failed out of Ziz. The dad was stunned. He apparently called the principal to verify my wife attended that university because he didn't believe her. As a side note, the son was not late with even one assignment for the rest of the year. For any of his teachers. So in the end, I guess this isn't a no, not my child story, but it was about to be one. Dad, my son deserves special treatment. Teacher, no he doesn't. Here's why. Dad, fair enough. I'll see myself out. A family on the street had a lot of kids that ranged from toddler to in their 30s. I think they had about 15-20 children in total and tons of grandchildren. They owned two houses that were side by side on my street, as well as the two houses directly behind them on the next street over. Then they knocked down all the fences so the houses were all essentially on one connected lot. This family was huge, so people would constantly come and go. All of them were generally buttholes and bullies. They said a lot of racist stuff. Their high school aged son sprayed bug spray in some elementary school kids eyes. They would constantly borrow things like bikes and skateboards from other kids in the neighborhood and completely destroy them. They would break people's Christmas decorations and stuff in their yards. They were always fighting. One of them actually killed somebody in an armed robbery, and another attempted to kill somebody, but none of their kids ever did anything wrong, according to the parents. All they kept saying was that their kids were good little Christians who went to church 3 days per week. I tried really hard to avoid them but I lived right next door, went to school with some of them, and some of them were my age. So it was kind of impossible. Ode oil rules. So, not a teacher but this kid in my class used to hit other kids pretty regularly without any teacher intervention because it was either outside of school or just a small peck that hurt but wasn't really making someone cry. One day this kid became so aggressive he almost beat the crap out of a kid in our class. In our classroom. The teacher was away but we all saw him do it. Teacher came back and saw him hit the kid. We were all so surprised we didn't know what to do. I was called as witness and we got sent out of class. I wasn't in any trouble of course. The parents of both of them got called and they arrived at the school between an hour and two hours. When the situation was explained the parents of the kid who started hitting the other kid just wouldn't believe it was their son who did it. Our son wouldn't hurt a fly. He has never been aggressive. Even after I told them this wasn't the only time they would call me stupid and a filthy liar. They even brought in other kids from our class. The son noticed his parents defending him and started saying he would never hit anyone and definitely not him because he liked him as a person. Well, the school decided to suspend the kid and we've never seen him since. He moved to another school and the parents tried to sue the school for them suspending the kid. Don't think it worked. Sorry for botched grammar English. Your English is great my dude. I have a case of the opposite of this. As the parent, I got 4 phone calls in 2 weeks from the school about my 7 year old son's behavior, having emotional breakdowns in weird situations. And I finally had enough and left work to drive to his school and sit down with his teachers and the principal so we could come up with a game plan. I was 100% on their side. My son can be very whiny when he thinks he's bad at something or when people don't understand him. So I wanted them to tell me what I could do better at home to shape it out of him. The school was baffled that I drove up there to meet with them about it. They refused to let me speak with his teachers. Said that they were extremely familiar with my son and that he was an angel and one of everyone's favorite kids. They said compared to the actual troublemakers, my son's whining wasn't even a blip on the radar. I asked why I was getting repeated phone calls about how bad his behavior was and they said it was just protocol to let us know if there was a behavior issue but that it wasn't anything I should worry about. Was very frustrating. My wife was sobbing at home after the second phone call thinking that we'd raise the monster and that we were horrible parents. My friend is a teacher who got headbutted the other day by a 7 year old. The parents said he must have been provoked. What kind of human being are you that you answer a call that says your kid head butted an adult and you look to make excuses for them? Teacher here. When a student threw himself at me and it was my fault for being 24 at the time and therefore, more their age than the staff's age so it's understandable and I should be flattered. My friend is a teacher. 
She had a kid who threatened to shoot up the school last year. I guess it got pretty far as it was considered a viable threat and the police were called. They searched his house for weapons. Found some minor weapons from my understanding. But no major guns or anything. The items were confiscated and he continues to go to the school in her classes. He looks up white supremacy and gun stuff on the computers at school regularly. His mom says the situation last year was just his little mistake. Side note, this was not in the US. I read Dr. Peter Langman's book Why Kids Kill, Inside the Minds of School Shooters. A couple of the 10 he featured in his book had parents who knew of clear warning signs but were in denial. I follow a lot of crime news. A 16 year old boy murdered this girl who was supposedly pregnant with his kid and didn't tell him after 6 months. I guess she had some foresight into the type of person he was but still wanted to keep the kid. Anyway the guy's parents come out saying it wasn't his fault. He would never do something like that. He has always been a good boy. Makes me wonder if his family is just in denial or if you really can't know what somebody may be plotting even in your own home. My boyfriend is a cop who all too commonly hears parents of a murderer say, he's a good boy, he would never do that, etc. And then you'll pull up his rap sheet and it shows convictions for assault, armed robbery, etc. Yeah, right. A perfect angel. Hey. I worked in a small town. With one elementary, one middle and one high school. It was the kind of place where everyone knew each other, everyone was somehow creepily related to one another, and parents were hit or miss when it came to support. I was teaching pre-K, and I had one student who was the son of a teacher at the same school. I expressed concerns about the child because he showed signs of autism, and mam a fellow teacher at school, wrote it off as him being spoiled. Noise was a huge trigger for the student. He wouldn't interact with his peers in the class or at recess, and he was very particular about the way things were done. All year I told his mom that he worked well one on one. But he struggled in a large group environment usually due to the noise. He was very smart, but he could benefit from a smaller class environment. Long story short, in May mom decided that maybe she would agree to get him evaluated, comma and then proceeded to ignore the results. I still think about that student and hope he has gotten the help he needs to be successful. B. A student in the same class as the one mentioned above. Same year. It was eventful. He decided one day that he did not like me. I believe he had a lot going on. Dad had just gone to prison and mom was very sketchy and prone to blaming siblings teachers when things went wrong. The boy began destroying my room out of anger daily. He would jump off of desks, stand on chairs, try to climb other furniture and harm others in anger. I frequently called a texted mom, and one day she finally came to school for a beating and told me that I was picking on her child. She told me other kids did things and didn't get in trouble, but I was targeting her child. Yay okay. He would kick me and punch me, and I would write it all down. Mom ended up threatening me over Facebook small town. Everyone knew about it, and my principal had me file a police report. Parents and future parents, please don't be blind. It sucks hearing bad stuff about your child, but teachers don't just make it up because they hate your kid. I teach 7th grade math. One of my students mothers is so convinced that her child is God's gift to this earth. She says that math and science are his best subjects. Coincidentally, he's failing both subjects. Of course she blames the teachers. Well obviously it's the teacher's fault for not understanding his mathematical scientific genius. Not a teacher, but it does involve a no, not my child from a very adamant mother who refuses to believe her child isn't perfect. I'm an orthodontist, and this one child is in treatment with me with braces. The kid is just terrible at following instructions, keeping his hands away from the buttons, equipment, and his mouth. He's constantly picking at things, and braces are no exception. For weeks we kept having braces off and having to be put back on. Lo and behold, we finally have a sit down with dad. Luckily he brought him in, to show him exactly how resilient braces are with proper care. A light bulb goes off and the boy no longer picks his braces. Well, at least does a dramatically better job of it. I wonder what mom has been telling dad. Cause he had no idea this kid was picking at the braces. Though, he also doesn't brush his teeth well. I grade everyone with oral hygiene, oh, at every visit, and this boy gets consistent D's and C's. 
Bad enough that I warn mom and junior that I'll dismiss them from treatment prematurely if it doesn't improve. I literally showing gobs of pluck to the kid and mom. I send letters detailing the issues that will arise with continued poro. And we even show them videos at the start of treatment and refresher appointments when this becomes a problem. At our last appointment he had broken brackets again and admitted to picking at his braces. We point out how delayed in treatment we are. How his O is creeping towards terrible, and that we may need to terminate treatment if cooperation doesn't improve. Indignant. Mom walks out of the office annoyed. A few days later she receives our oral hygiene letter and calls, as I'm told by my staff. Mom, please stop sending home letters about my son's brushing. He tries very hard to brush his teeth, and I don't believe that his brushing was poor at the last visit. It seems like every time we come in my son is told his brushing is bad. There's something wrong with doctor, Budgers's scoring system. Office staff, would you like to speak to doctor, Budgers? Maybe he can clarify some things with you. Mom, no, my son tries very hard at brushing and he's very talented. There's no way that he isn't brushing well. Whatever he tells me isn't going to change my mind. Click, people, you can try hard at something but still do a terrible job at it. Maybe you should heed my advice when I'm telling you your child needs to up their brushing game. Not to mention oral habits in general. I had no idea I was treating a child prodigy here. Was a teacher in my previous career. That's another story. It was a private school with uniforms. But one girl repeated showed up in a skirt that was just too short. It barely covered her butt. Much less anything else when she bent over. When we had parent teacher conference. I had the opportunity to mention it to her mom. Of course, she said, no, not my child, because mom's skirt was just as short. Why bother putting your daughter in a school with uniforms and paying private tuition when you don't bother to follow the rules? They left after that year. Wonder why? Not a teacher but I can present my mom for this one. A teacher suspected I had ADHD and spoke to me about it before talking to my mom about it. I freely admit I have the attention span of a nervous chihuahua on crack so it was no big deal to me if this teacher tried to do me a favor. My mom went off on her for accusing me of having a problem and acted like this teacher attempted to murder her with a broken bottle. I've wanted to contact this teacher now that it's years later and have been unable to find her to since then since I feel like I owe her an apology for my mother's behavior and a thank you for trying. Oh and another one from when I was actually in school, which made me remember just how awful parents can be. I must have only been about 5 or 6 at the time. And there was a really awful teacher who absolutely chose favorites in her class. And anyone who didn't happen to be in that list was basically ignored. I was one of those unlucky ones. Anyway, it was break time and I was in the queue to get a snack. And one of the teacher's favorite students was in front of me. And, out of nowhere, she said OW, you bit me. Of course, I was dumbfounded as I was minding my own business. But, lo and behold, there was a bite mark on her hand. The teacher went nuts, and sent me to the headmaster, who also went nuts, and I think I was given a detention. I went home and my parents were pee off because this bite mark was obviously self-inflicted, as she would have either been facing me, she wasn't, or I would have had to have broken her wrist to make a bite mark like that. However, when we had a meeting with the headmaster and this girl's parents, they were adamant that she wouldn't lie about something like that, and I was lying. I had to have a week or so off school, and during that time, my parents took me to a dentist to get a mold made of my teeth so that they could take it in to prove it didn't match. During this time, we didn't really have a lot of contact with this girl's parents, but the parents of a couple of other students, two more of the teacher's favorites, called up my house and said to my mum your son's a freaking liar and hung up. We had to change our phone number after that. Luckily, I was transferred to a different class, but looking back on it, there are some elements that could have been made a police matter. Not only because of the phone call, but there was some shady crap concerning the teacher, and I really hope that it eventually came out, as she would have easily lost her job over it. My sister tried this when we were little. My sister had just lost her two front teeth. My mum looked at the bite mark and said no she didn't. She could see the missing front teeth in the bite mark. Unfortunately a few years later she did manage to get me in trouble by writing my name on the sofa with pen. I like to tell her I'm still planning revenge we are now in our 30s. 
teachers of Reddit. What was the biggest student meltdown you ever witnessed? I had a first grader that was hot. We did not have air conditioning. So he stood up, knocking over his chair. That wasn't enough so he threw the chair then walked to my desk and cleared it off with a swipe of his arm. After that, he pushed the intercom button calling the office and before they could answer he stepped into the hall to sit down to wait for the principal. Once the principal arrived to take him to the air conditioned office, the student bit the principal on the arm. We heard the hollering as we were trying to clean up. He was suspended for 3 days and got to stay home in his air conditioned apartment. I had a first grader that was hot. You're now on a list. Taught special ed. Had a kid throw a chair through the window, break it, jump through window and run away. Man, I do not miss teaching. Not me, but a teacher friend of mine was proctoring sats when one kid flips his desk and screams frick you Daniel and storms out. Turns out Daniel had been ripping his own pubes out of his junk and putting them on the kid's shoulder in front of him. When the kid in front of him found out he obviously flipped out. And for the record, yes, Daniel is a fake name. To be fair, I would probably act the same way, knowing that some C is putting his sweaty nut hair on me. We were meeting in the computer lab for a week because the student were working on projects. One of my students was hanging out with his girlfriend before class started. I was in the classroom, so I wasn't paying any attention to the conversation. He walks into the room and he was fuming. I asked him what was wrong and he didn't respond. He went to his computer and punched the screen. I tried to calm him down and he picked up the table, which had 5 computers on it, and tipped it over. I got the rest of the students out and called security. He absolutely destroyed the computer lab. He was suspended for the rest of the year, was banned from prom and graduation, and his parents had to pay for the damages. His girlfriend apparently cheated on him. I heard they got back together after that, but it was never confirmed. Back in my day if a kid punched a computer screen he would end up with a set of broken knuckles. I taught English in Korea to middle and high school students. I like to walk up and down the aisles between the desks occasionally during class just to make sure that everybody is paying attention and not using their phones. One day during a 7th grade class I walked to the very last row and looked down. I see a nice girl, completely average in every way, using an exacto knife to carve up her arms. Both arms were bleeding profusely and had about 30 horizontal cuts up to her elbows. She tried to cover them up but I walked up on her too quickly. I grabbed the assistant teacher and whispered to her what was going on without any of the other students noticing and she took the girl to the nurse. Not an overt meltdown, but something was wrong there. Dang, when you get to the point you'll do it in public at risk of being caught things are going pretty badly. Hope she got the help she needed but I don't know how mental illnesses are treated there. Adding this because it's comical and not sad, like so many others on this thread, we had a girl in our school with Down syndrome who was a tiny shrimp of a thing. Skinny, short, and fast. Her appointed aides were older and not in the best shape, so she gave them a run for their money. Often, the kiddos in her classroom come down to take care of recycling and such every day in all the hallways. And one day she must have been pretty mad at her aid, because she gave her a good long side eye, and then took off for the exit doors in our wing. I'm a regular ed English teacher, who was just on my way to make copies, and saw her sprint away toward the doors. I literally knelt down, poked her around the waist, she was looking back at her aid, smiling, and basically hugged her into a stop saying I don't think you're supposed to go out those doors her aides laughed and laughed, and she just looked at me. Horrified that I dare impede her break from freedom. Repeat this scenario about 8 or 9 times over 2 years. I think I hooked that kid in a dead sprint more often than anyone else. When I retire, I want to come back and work with these kids. They're a hoot. I've gotten pretty good at snagging kids on the run. The fun part about working with the under 5 crowd is they don't know you can anticipate their moves. I teach English in Japan and I worked in some elementary schools for a few years. In one class this one kid just wouldn't keep quiet. Kept talking in a loud voice to the kid next to him no matter how many times I asked him to be quiet and pay attention. I got frustrated and told him off saying that even if he didn't want to learn he was screwing it up for everyone else and to either be quiet or get out. All in Japanese of course, just to note. Kids are almost never kicked out of class in Japan as far as I'm aware because people have the right to education by law here. 
The kid flipped out and started yelling at me. I can't remember everything he said but the highlights were translators approximately die freaking pervert and this was coming from a 4th grader. Then he buggered off somewhere. I'm not a teacher but I was assisting a teacher because I'm a student aide and one of the students started arguing with the teacher and he threw his desk down hard and started calling the teacher a godless w I told him to calm down and he punched me in the face and then stormed out of the classroom. He was expelled due to that being his third disturbance and I got a black eye. Godless w. That's an interesting insult. In 8th grade, 13 years old. A military kid who had only been at our school for the year was moving again. He had severe anger issues and was seen as kind of weird. On our last field trip he stood up, said this long winded speech and then proceeded to tell all the teachers and some of the kids to frick off. It was hilarious sad. I'm a teacher in a prison. They were doing Mavis Beacon teachers typing and one inmate kept putting his hands on the wrong keys, to which he freaks out and starts yelling at the computer how it's a dumb mother. Mavis Beacon is a dumb mother sucker. I type how I want. I'm a teacher and have been teaching for 15 years. Last year, two 7th grade students were talking smack to one another. When it came time to switch classes, the one boy, Denny, walked up and slapped the other, Timmy. I was standing right next to them and thought that he just slapped books out of Timmy's hand because Timmy dropped his books when Denny slapped him. I then step between Denny and Timmy because I know if Denny starts a physical fight with Timmy, I won't be able to separate them. Just as I am trying to talk Denny down and move him away from Timmy, he loses it and my co-worker has to put him in a hold. I immediately tell Timmy to get into my room so he is safe. Meanwhile, my co-worker is wrestling with Denny outside of my room. Denny is desperately trying to get into my room to get at Timmy. Normally, I would have just locked the door and been done with it. However, I was using the laptops and there wasn't enough plugs in my classroom, so I had the cart in the room but it was plugged in at the outlet outside my room. So there I am, holding the door closed because it wouldn't lock with the cord in the way. All while my co-worker is still wrestling with Denny. Finally, I force the door to latch and cam lock it. I turned around and my class is just staring at me in disbelief and stunned silence. At that point, I recommended that we try some of the breathing exercises my student teacher had taught them that morning. We all laughed, except Timmy. He was freaking out, sobbing and shaking. By this time, Denny had been subdued and moved to a new location. My principal comes to my room to find Timmy freaking out and we have to clear the room because he refused to move or respond to our directions. It was one of the craziest days in my career. On a side note, my co-worker who had to put the student in a hold had thrown out his back the day before and couldn't even bend down to tie his shoes. I have no idea how he was able to wrestle with this kid for several minutes. I am thankful he was there or it may have been a very different situation. The answer to your question at the end there is adrenaline. This happened 10 years ago, when I worked as a primary school teacher. I was teaching year 2, 8ish year olds. At the time, one student stood out. He was a very bright kid, could do mental arithmetic as quickly as me if not faster, but he was also extremely weird. No eye contact, did odd repetitive stuff by himself at recess like timing his sprints across a certain section of playground over and over. He had a few, less, odd friends who tolerated him, but he was mostly bullied for being so strange. He usually reacted stoically or defensively, but one day he absolutely snapped. At recess, he was being teased by a popular girl for reading so much, and she dared him to punch her when he got upset. Apparently today was the day because he did, more than once, all directly to the stomach. Probably 5-6 good kid sized blows before I reached them and he snapped out of it and stopped. He got put through the ringer for that as most teachers disliked him as well. I tried to explain he was constantly bullied and usually non-violent. It got taken into consideration and he was still suspended for a week. From the kid's point of view, totally worth it. Beating up a bully a sign of deterrence for a week of suspension. Man I would have paid to stay at home as a result of breaking rules but my school system does not suspend students at all. We were on a class trip on the way back to school when one of my colleagues pointed to a boy who was leaning against the subway doors, upset about something. I walked over and learned he had left his backpack at the movie theater and was very upset. I tried to encourage him but he didn't care. 
Eventually we are at our train stop and everyone is getting off but this kid is still leaning against the subway doors. Opposite side had opened. Doors are about to close and only he and I remain from our group. I tell him please don't freak out but I'm gonna take you off the train we have to go. He immediately starts struggling but I'm a big guy so I get him off. As train starts pulling away he is trying to walk back towards it and we are all like WTF be careful train is pulling out of station. Eventually I grab him and drag him backwards to the ground and yell at co-workers to get kids out of here. As they are walking away he is trying to crawl towards the open subway tracks. Presumably to kill himself. This kid is 12 and I'm a giant man but I am struggling to subdue him. I wrestled in high school so I know how to keep control of someone on the ground but he is really determined to get to those tracks. I'm still struggling with him and another train comes by but I keep him on platform. People are by now asking him if he is okay and eyeing me like WTF are you doing to this child. Eventually I yell to my co-worker to go get the police and she runs off in tears. Now I'm alone struggling with this child on the ground and I assume it's about to get real but as soon as he hears mention of police he starts calming down and begs me to let him go promising to be good. After a minute of not letting go I talk him into standing up with me and I take him away while aggressively holding his hand and putting my arm around him. We breathlessly walk into school and I immediately take him to main office where a small crisis team has gathered. Once he is safely sitting in a chair I collapse into one as well and start processing my ordeal. His family comes to school to pick him up but we have to mandatorily send him to hospital for psychiatric evaluation. Couple days later he is back in school like nothing ever happened. We had a special bond after that and he always came to my classroom to check on me all year even though I wasn't his teacher. I don't work at that school anymore but I'm heading back at end of this year to see those students graduate and hope to find him happier and healthier. I once had a student who was using a laser pointer during class presentations that day and after his group was finished, he was of course the normal freshman and decided to shine it around the room. Before I was able to tell him to cut it out he managed to shine it in another student's direction. The student who had the laser pointed at him exploded. He flipped his desk screaming a string of profanities before punching my cinder block wall shattering his hand. He then stormed out of my classroom before I was able to address the situation get him some help for his hand. GF. Oh my gosh. I definitely didn't interpret exploded as an emotional outburst as much as literal combustion. I teach middle school and have witnessed many melt their wounds. A favorite was a new girl in my class. She threw one of my calculators across the room so I told her to go the office. She went out yelling swearing and I just stood there non-reactive. Then she went to slam the door on her way out. Or at least she tried. Can't slam a safety door. Self closer. Couldn't help but have a laugh at that. There was a girl in my high school who tried that multiple times. She would have an argument with her boyfriend in class then try to storm out and slam the door for dramatic effect. At first usually tried not to escalate the situation by laughing but it became a running joke. Who oh boy. I used to work after school and summer kids activities programs. And there was always something. Probably the one that was saddest and most affecting to me was the little girl who had been abandoned by both her parents. Drugs yay. And was living with her grandma and her severely disabled and handicapped older brother that required 24 stroke 7 care. Her grandma was kind and supportive but had her hands full with the brother and just couldn't give this girl what she needed. No one could. The girl was always sweet and well behaved, until something minor would happen to upset her equilibrium. Like she'd play catch and miss the ball a few times, or she'd paint something and get a paint stain on her shirt, and then the 180 degree switch to raging heck demon. Most of the time she'd turn her rage and pain on herself. On a field trip she lost a coloring book and responded by bashing her face into a wall until my assistant physically pinned her down on the floor. Another day she got paint on her hat and responded by raking her nails down her face and across her arms until we restrained her and screaming herself hoarse. Every single day at lunch she had to be coaxed to eat anything at all. Her pain was so present and huge, though usually well masked. Sometimes some unwitting kid would get in the way, and she would just go feral and start screaming and biting. I dunno. She was, most of the time, such a lovely and good-hearted little person. It was heartbreaking. I wanted to sweep her up and take all her pain away, or shoot her dang selfish loser parents, though they had probably done the best thing for her, under the circumstances. 
It's been at least 10 years. I still think about her, and hope she's okay. Typical Oscar did not a teacher but, a kid in my high school told our English teacher that he was going to bring a gun to school and shoot everyone but her so she had to live with the guilt that everyone died because of her. That was, fun. I am an elementary school teacher in a public school that serves a high population of students living below the poverty line. Within this demographic there is a substantial proportion of students that also come to us from a background of trauma. In my first year of teaching I had this student that had one of the more heartbreaking stories you will ever hear and was just starting to work through these experiences. It quickly became apparent that the school setting was not a suitable environment for this student. But because of the limited amount of inpatient support available for young children facing serious mental health issues, this student remained at school. There was no worst meltdown for this student. However, there were many meltdowns where this student, only a third grader, tried to severely harm themselves at school. This went from beating themselves, stabbing themselves with sharp objects, pencils, pens, etc., fleeing the school and running into oncoming traffic, scratching, biting, suffocating, and just generally trying to harm themselves. The student was evacuated from the school in an ambulance multiple times throughout the school year as a result. We, myself and other school and district staff members, exhausted ourselves and our resources to try and support this student as much as possible but with little success. It was rough. I work at a residential mental health facility for children. Imagine that one child and multiply it by 40. Not a teacher but witnessed it. I was a sophomore, and at my high school, after lunch we had to go outside, no matter how hot or cold it was, and weren't allowed inside till the bell rang. Well, a senior that year, who was known for doing stuff he wanted when he felt like the rules were stupid, and frankly it was freezing as frick that day. Well just so happens the one teacher who had outside duty that day, was standing by the door when he started to go in. Just to make things clear, this teacher has a lazy eye, and when she's talking to you, she's usually looking to the side of you. Well the senior walks in and she's running up saying you can't go inside yet. He says I'm cold, and it's freezing out here. I'm going inside. She runs up and grabs his arm saying he can't go inside or he's getting detention. So he screams at the top of his lungs I'm going inside you freaking sideways looking B. And then went inside. I think he was giving like a week of detention for that. Forcing students to be outside in freezing weather would result in a lawsuit around here. <laughs> Math teacher here. I had a second your student whip out his penis under the desk and start masturbating because he couldn't think of the last answer for the final exam. I had to send him to the dean's office and his explanation was it lets me think more clearly. I had a class that integrated some of the special education students for 2 hours a day. We were having a holiday party, so the kids got to push their desks together and have snacks and watch a movie. I'm sitting at the desk grading papers when I hear the class getting kind of noisy. I ask what's going on and someone mentions that Trevor doesn't like this part of the movie. Trevor is a 12 year old boy on the autism spectrum. He's a very large boy, about 6 feet 0 and well over 200 pounds. I tell Trevor to come on over to my desk and he does. He says he doesn't like when people sing in movies and starts covering his ears. I tell him I will fast forward this part and he flips his crap. Apparently, he hates fast forwarding more than he hates singing in movies. He picks up a desk and whips it against the wall near a set of windows. Flips over every desk he can get his hand on all while screaming like someone is attacking him. He's just trashing the room and starts going after the kids. I yell for one of the kids to run and get his main teacher and another to get the principal. Trevor pushes a few kids hard enough to make them fall down and then grabs a girl by throat and starts choking her. He has a look on his face of a madman and he's sweating profusely and turning red while this girl is trying to fight him off. I get over there and am able to pry his hands off with the help of a few students. Trevor then turns to me and in a crazy, deep voice says I will find your house and hide under your bed until you come home. I will rape and murder you and laugh while I'm doing it. His teacher came in and was able to pull him away and Trevor just stared at me the entire way out laughing like crazy. It was scary as frick. I worked in a really rough school and have tons of stories. One third grader didn't want to line up for the water fountain after a hot recess. 
he wanted to jump the line and get his water first. Well, my colleague tells him to get to the back of the line BC no cutting. And the little sucker picked up a chair, whipped it at my friend and shattered the glass in the classroom door. Kid didn't even flinch or act like he felt like he was in it or anything. Two more this one is funny. I was teaching science to the 5th graders. I am white. So my students, 98% African American, loved it when I would flush red with exercise, embarrassment, or even from something rubbing my neck, like a seat belt, and leaving a red mark. The kids were fascinated by my ability to be red. Anyway, teaching science, kid raises his hand, and completely off topic goes, hey, miss so and so, are you a virgin well? You can imagine I was so shocked, and immediately turned bright red, so then the whole class starts laughing. It was pretty funny, so I laughed too, little crap. Last one, huge girl, 12 years old, 160 pounds 5 feet 9 in my 5th grade class. This chick was 100% developed and matured. Another girl 5th grader 4 feet 4 55 pounds maximum. Not even close to puberty. These two get in a fist fight right before lunch. Obvious the big girl is murdering the smaller one. There is a policy about not getting involved. But big girl was starting to slam little girl's head into the metal lockers. So I felt I had to intervene. I grab little girl by the waist and pull her out of big girl's reach and place her to the side. Big girl comes at me like a raging bull. She punched me square in my mouth. Hurt like heck. Busted my lip a little. The whole class is like ooh ooh. In the quiet I said to her. Stop. Do you realize you've just hit a teacher she just jumped at me and ripped a good sized chunk of my hair out. No joke. She got suspended for a couple of days. But that's it. They asked if I wanted to press charges. But I was scared to be a white teacher pressing charges against a 12 year old girl in that neighborhood. She was removed from my class at my request though. It's a pretty bad state of affairs when a teacher is afraid to press perfectly justifiable battery charges against a student because of the possible backlash from the community. Obligatory not a teacher but in 7th grade in gym class we were playing floor hockey. This one kid, Jack, was having a rough game. A different kid who played hockey tried to jump the ball over Jack but hit him in the forehead. So he freaked out and started slashing at people's ankles. The gym teachers finally started to call out his name to get him to sit out. The catch is that one of the teachers was calling him Jake instead of Jack. Cue the meltdown. He whips the hockey stick at the teachers nearly hitting one of them and yells my name isn't Jake and begins to cry. He finally calmed down and the gym teachers had a chance to talk to him pretty sure he got a detention for it. That was one of the more interesting days of that year. Serious my name's not, Rick moment. It was my first year teaching out of college and it wasn't the safest of schools. It was my French 1 class with almost 40 students. I had a student throw a desk in my general direction because of frustration from another student. You know crap gets real when furniture starts flying in your direction. Plus one level if it has your name on it. I worked as a second grade teacher at an elementary school for a couple years. One of the more talented girls, it's hard to tell who is really smart at that age, but she always seemed on top of things, had no dad, and lived with her mom who it turned out was a bit of a rage addict. One Monday she came into school looking just totally shell shocked. I asked her what was wrong and she wouldn't say. This lasted till the Tuesday of the next week. Another who student who was always trying to get under anyone's skin made fun of this girl for her mom's addiction. And the girl just lost it. She tried to punch the other student and just started screaming. Once we had calmed her down, we asked her what had set her off. And she explained that her mom had been using the needles again last week, and had gotten high, but that she was still sleeping on the bed. We weren't sure what this meant, but as is procedure, we called the police who went with CPS to check it out. Turns out, her mom OD'd the weekend before, and the girl had no idea she was dead so she just kept doing her thing. That was pretty terrifying. Given the context, it's not surprising she seemed to be on top of things. She was essentially taking care of herself. Attractive teachers of Reddit. Did you know which students had a crush on you? And what is the strangest or most inappropriate thing you overheard said about you? I was an average looking high school teacher. That's really all it takes. 
I had more than one student say I had a nice butt with an earshot of me. I was told by other students that so and so likes you and I'd only notice it after they mentioned it but then it was obvious. I had one girl pull the I'll do anything for a higher grade. I had one girl in a 6 inch skirt lift a leg to my eye level. I was sitting to show me her new shoes. I was spanked on two separate occasions. The list goes on. Kids SRE crazy. The strangest thing I ever overheard about myself was while I was teaching at an all boys private high school. One of them whispered to another. She's so chill. She never gets bitchy. You can never tell when she's on her period. As a student majoring in secondary ed, it is my goal to be like you. This isn't from a student, but in my freshman year of high school I walked in on the entire baseball coaching staff discussing the various ways they wished to frick the Spanish teacher. Yep, throw away account here. I've had students spread their legs while wearing short skirts in front of me. One girl even pulled her skirt so far up that from my view it looked like she was sitting there in her underwear. Of course, being a new teacher I had absolutely no idea how to deal with this situation. Most common is girls that will seductively suck on their pens while staring into my soul. Even had one student put a hand on my upper thigh while asking me a question at my desk. This all happened last year when I took over for a history class since the teacher was out for the entire year. I was 23 years old teaching junior seniors. It was freaking heck. When I tried to tell the other teachers what was going on, the female teachers would all just laugh and talk about how I really got thrown to the wolves, while the older male teachers would just talk about how lucky I was. I'd also be lying if I said I never had some perverted fantasies on lonely nights at home. But I'm only freaking human. I'm pretty dense, so I don't always notice when people are checking me out. However, my students have to fill out evaluations at the end of the semester, and those usually give me an insight into their thoughts. Q. What did you like best about the Tay? A. I like that she was hot. The worst part is that some student worker has to type up all those awkward responses. The worst part is that some student worker has to type up all those awkward responses. That worker student was probably laughing really hard. I would have. At my high school, the hot art teacher that all the guys lusted after married the hot biology teacher that all the girls lusted after. An entire school of broken hearts. Not a teacher, but I have a friend who's one. When I was out of work for a while, I went to help her out in her grade 1 classroom. I played the guitar and helped her out with the music segments of her class. One day a little 6 year old came up to me and said, Do you have my phone number? I said, I, no, I don't have it. She said, oh, I have a trampoline you know. I said, that's awesome. She said, you could come and jump on it sometime if you wanted to. Innuendo aside, it turned out I actually knew her mom from a few years back. I went over, we jumped on the trampoline, then went to Dairy Queen for ice cream. TL. DR. Six year old asked me on a date. It happened. I'm a male in my 20s and was a teacher at a public middle school, where the hormones are ranging and the social boundaries are completely non-existent. I had 12 and 13 year old girls doing things as innocent as asking me to walk them to class, or eat lunch in my classroom with me, to more explicit weird like trying to touch my face or hair, leaving me notes and pottery, asking for my phone number and Facebook, and asking skin 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 almost daily. It was Mr. See bear, do you have a girlfriend? I know someone who has a crush on you. A lot of the students also had mothers close to my age, so there was some attempted matchmaking by my students as well. Parent-teacher conferences were weird. It was oddly flattering though, if only women in their 20s were so upfront and direct. Thankfully nothing negative came of it, I loved my job and had full support of the other staff and administration who were aware of the attention I was getting. Unfortunately, due to the strict budget cuts, I found myself unemployed so I'm leaving in 3 weeks to teach in Korea. Not me. My older brother used to propose to one of the cute English teachers at our high school every single day. 5 years later when I got to her class, she remembered him very fondly. Turns out she had been going through a terrible divorce that year and his daily proposals made her laugh. I thought she was gonna say yes. I had a girl sit at my desk to use my computer during lunch. She announced to the other kids in the room I'm behind Mr. Q's desk. 
Usually I'm under it. I hate typing on my phone. I hate people who tell the truth because there isn't a single sexual relationship in here. And if I was going to lie on the internet I would definitely have had a raging orgy with 4 just turned 18 quadruplets. I've taught in New Zealand and now I'm teaching in the states. It's very obvious when a kid has a crush on me or is just checking me out. I'm constantly getting boob stared and seeing smirks between boys overhearing comments. The things I've just overheard? Dang. She's a sex sexy bee. Yeah, that's right. Walk away. I love that view. And things like that. The most inappropriate? That would be when a 16 year old yelled out hey miss. I like your tea as I walked by his classroom. Comma hey miss. I like your tea. Sounds like Jonah from Summer Heights High. Was an English teacher in Japan at a high school. I had the foreign heart factor going for me. Plus I was 21. 22 at the time so by far the youngest teacher at the school. When I first started, there was a comedian in one of my best classes. Genuinely funny. Even in English which is rare for a 16 year old learning a language. I only taught him his first year but would see him around the hallways afterwards. He regularly asked me what my favorite food was, and if I would like to go get it with him. I'd say, maybe next time he eventually asked me to pretend to be his girlfriend in a film his class was making for a field trip. Of course I said yes, and the scene involved him introducing me to his friends in class, me linking arms with him, smiling and saying, Hi, I'm quite Quetzalcoatl. Another time, I had one freshman student run up to me dragging his friend, and proceed to try and tell my in English his friend had a crush on me, only, he didn't know how to say it in English, so it came out like my friend he grabs his friend in a headlock my friend, B, you, then proceeded to ask the other students around how to say, my friend has a crush on you in English, I laughed, pretended not to understand, the friend was tomato red by then, and said I had to get going, and to have a nice day. As an exchange student in Japan, I had the same thing. S. Happened to me. Girls were literally all over my friends and I, and I don't consider myself too handsome. I'm certainly not George Clooney. As a student teacher I walked into our local high school to observe a special needs class. One of the regular high school students told me I should come and observe him instead, if you know what I mean. I also had a 6th grade boy in the class where I did my long student teaching experience who was in love with me. He'd sit in the front row, propping up his head on his hand, starting at me with his mouth hanging open. All the kids teased him about it but he didn't care. It was cute. I used to babysit a little boy that would get dressed up for me whenever I came over. He was really smooth about it though. If he knew he was going to be babysat, his mom said he would dress nice for the whole day to not arouse suspicion. He would only play his video games and do really non-active things so he didn't get his clothes messed up. His tell was that he combed his hair, which he never did without being told. He was the little brother of my best friend at the time, so I knew what he was really like. But it's like when I babysat him it was date night or something. We would play board games and when I had him put his PJS on, they would be the really nice two piece button up ones. He never tried anything, thankfully, but I thought it was so dang cute. I'm an English teacher in a foreign country, so that alone probably has a lot to do with the attention I get from students, about 90% of whom are male, I'm a girl, I'm also the youngest teacher in the school by far, I currently have about 100 friend requests from students on Facebook, I get messages from at least a student or two every day, to top it off, my students think I don't understand their language at all, so they often make comments thinking I can't understand them. My first day, I overheard one student ask his friend well, what do you think of the new English teacher his friend looked me up and down, smiled, and responded, oh yes, I am very satisfied, how I kept a straight face I'm really not sure. Had a teacher in high school who met up with students after they graduated and slept with them. I heard he got fired and arrested this past year because he decided to take a chance on one of his current students and asked her out to coffee and back to his place. Unbeknownst to him, she was lesbian and went and told the administration right away. Halfway to the bottom and we got us something good. I teach in Indonesia. I have had many students ask me out after class, show cleavage during class, 
or keep their legs spread while sitting. I don't think it's because I am overly attractive, but because I am white. Can confirm. I live in Asia and white folk are all pea magnets. I guess it's like a Pokemon. The rarer something someone is the more appealing it seems. Ugly middle school teacher here with a hot wife. A group of girls took a picture of me with my wife and put it on Instagram with the caption how did he get her I ain't even mad though. I'm not a teacher but a student at an alternative school where my math teacher is a straight 11 out of 10. For reference see Henry Cavill aka Man of Steel. Since it's mostly older people going back to finish high school in my class he gets shamelessly hit on and flirted with constantly. One day the same usual group of girls were trying to flirt with him and asking him if he has kids. A wife or a special lady when he says no the ringleader of the dumb B group winks at him and says well then how about taking me for a spin to which he replies I don't think my boyfriend would like that very much he turned beat red and left him alone after that. A couple weeks later I stayed after class to do some work for extra credit and we were chatting away about Halloween and I asked him if he was going to do a dorky couples costume with his boyfriend he looked at me laughed and said I'm actually straight I just wanted those girls to pay attention to the lesson and not my dashing good looks keep it between us okay I think he handled it pretty well. Except now there's a couple guys that hit on him. That guy is genius. Yo, Miz. Canny through mirror, you look nice today. Yo, Miz. Canny through mirror, my 18th birthday is next month. You don't understand, Miz. Canny through mirror, I got it bad for you. Yo, and the all time favorite. Hey, Miz. Canny through mirror, I had a dream about you last night. Yo, Miz. Canny through mirror, my 18th birthday is next month. Oh god. I think my math teacher knew. He was also the wrestling coach and he told us if we ever wanted girls to be attracted to us we should get a job as a teacher his quote was you could be freaking Quasimoto and high school girls would still think you're cute. I wish it had been like this when I was actually in high school. I meant to say Quasimodo, but to the guy who got gold, you're welcome for the mistake. I don't consider myself a hard teacher, but I constantly find students staring at my chest, and some students have even stood beside me attempting to see cleavage. I don't even wear revealing shirts. Consequently, I consciously monitor the way I stand sit interact to avoid any issues, never being in a classroom alone with a student, avoiding conversations considered sexual, etc. Should probably cut back on braless Thursday teach. Weirdest thing said to me I want you to twerk on my face. He got sent out of class for that one. Being a young attractive female secondary school teacher, you learn to perfect the not happening look. Although, most sexual advances come from students who are intentionally trying to get a rise out of you, and are doing it to be edgy and impress their peers. The ones who have a genuine crush are harder to shoot down, because they will take it much more personally. I'd be gentle but firm. Tell them it's not happening, and that there are wonderful people their own age they should consider instead. Honestly on my part, the idea of thinking about a student sexually is just weird. Whilst their bodies are mature, in the senior classes, their minds need so much more growing. They hold the sexual attraction of a tomato to me. MMMMM. Them tomatoes. I was teaching organic chemistry last year, was 25 and I've come to realize that I'm quite attractive. Plus being a swimmer doesn't hurt. Anyways, one female student would come to my office hours to shamelessly flirt with me under the pretense that she needed extra help. Turns out she did. I told her that I would only continue meeting with her if she came prepared with all her work done, in her handwriting. So she did, moved from near the bottom of the class to getting the second highest score on the final exam. I flirted back every so often, though very subtly, I never told her that I was gay. TLDR. Student spent so much time flirting with me that she accidentally raised her grade through hard work. Student here who harassed a teacher for 4 years in high school. I constantly told him he should leave his wife and we should run away together. Recently I sent him a Facebook message apologizing because what's funny to a 15 18 year old girl is cruel and unusual punishments to a married 30 something biology teacher. Student teaching at a junior high. 23 year old male, and I guess I'm attractive? 
The girls are flirty with me. A few have asked for my number, which I would not give out, obviously. Some show cleavage when I am trying to help them with an assignment. Or do that little thing girls do where they hit a guy's shoulder and giggle. Main thing is I just have to watch how I interact with them. They will take any act of kindness as an OMG I think he likes any moment. So I just have to be careful. And remember that I am their teacher, not their friend. Some of the boys will kind of defend me and call girls out on it. I guess bro code has no generation gap. They're probably just sick of you junior cock blocking them. When I was in college, I had my first field observation class. For non-teachers, it's not exactly student teaching. But I'd go to the school 2-3 times a week and observe. Help the teacher with grading making copies paperwork stuff. And I think I had to do like 5 lessons over the course of the semester or whatever. Anyway, I was a sophomore in college so around 19 years old. I was placed in a class of 12th graders in their last 9 weeks of school. So 17, 18, possibly 19. These kids were very close to my age. One day, a kid came up to me and said, So how do you like it at your college? I told him I liked it and he said, You know, I'm on campus like every weekend. You should let me take you out sometime. I was like, um, I don't think so and kind of ran away to do something else. It was pretty awkward dealing with this kid for the rest of the semester, but it gave me a fun story about the time a student asked me out. Another kind of funny story was from my first year of teaching high school. I didn't have a classroom so I had to travel around to different classrooms during the epic traffic jam that is high school hallways at class change. I look young. I guess, at least people tell me that all the time, and one day when I was walking through the hall between bells, I heard two girls talking behind me, I overheard one girl say to the other, hey, is that girl a teacher the other one rudely and snarkily replied to her friend, I don't know, but she sure dresses like one, and they giggled bitchily, I didn't say anything, but the thought that went through my head was, did I just get bullied, I think I just got bullied. The B in me would probably say, why yes I am. And here's a detention. Shameless brag. My wife is a hot ex-teacher. She taught 8th grade English at a school with a rougher student body. I am talking drug dogs in classrooms. To make a long story short. One day she turned around in class to see a kid jerking it openly at his desk. With tissues and lotion sitting on his desk. Completely shamelessly. Today this is my second favorite story from her first year of teaching. First story involves parents accusing a German shepherd of being racist when it found pot in their kid's pocket. I'm not especially attractive or anything, but when I was in Korea teaching ESL, I was the token white guy at a school in a small town called Jianju. The principal would actually lend me out to other schools so they could brag to the parents that they had a white guy on staff. I went to this one school once a week, and the kids would freak out whenever they saw me, pushing and shoving each other to get closer and give me candies or whatever. When I was sitting in the office, they'd all be pressed at the window fighting to get a look at me. Once one of them played a joke on their friend and opened the office door and pushed her in there with me, slamming the door behind her. So it was just her and I in there, and a crowd of kids laughing their asses off outside. The kid was so embarrassed that she just started pounding on the door for them to let her back out. It was like they'd pushed her into the gorilla's cage at the zoo. Gorilla's cage in a zoo. I lol'd at that. I just imagine her pounding the door and she turns around and you're standing there grinning like a maniac. It is obvious which students like me. They giggle and try to flirt. They walk by my class and say so and so likes you. Some students I don't even know walk by me and say hi and giggle. The mothers make it worse. They tell their daughters how cute or hot I am. Which excites these teenage girls more. One student told me she can't tell me what her mom said. That it's embarrassing for her. I have been asked to prom. The worst was a student reaching into my pocket. I wrote her up for attempting to steal from me. I knew that she was trying to get a hold of my Johnson. Her schedule was changed and she now has another teacher. I seriously have thought about quitting. It's uncomfortable when students, or anybody, keep making unwanted advances. I teach at a high school. Casually reaches into your pocket. There was a really hot teacher, who taught French, which made it so much worse. And all the guys used to check her out constantly. At the end of high school, all the teachers put on a play jokingly ripping into the students and when she came on, 
All the guys start wolf whistling like crazy. One dude even shouted get your baps out. How did she respond? Blew a kiss into the crowd. So yeah, she knew. And she embraced it well. My French teacher was an 80 year old nun. My wife is a teacher and she's attractive. I know I'm supposed to say that but it's true. She has literally no idea. Just because the oldest kids are only 13 stroke 14 she believed herself to be safe. I had to point out that 13 year old boys are practically obsessed with boobs and butts. This all came about when she asked me if a dress she was wearing was too short and my response was it's fine by me but not to be surprised if the older boys are suddenly very interested in walking up the stairs behind her. 13 stroke 14 is probably worse than HS age when it comes to boys. I remember what I was like when I was that age. Commenting in an ask credit thread with 1200 comments already is kind of pointless. But why not? If you're male, between the ages of 22 and 35, and not completely unfortunate looking, being in an authority position over high school girls guarantees that they'll throw themselves at you. Especially if you're a teacher that they work with for multiple years, like band directors, coaches, etc. I'm a band director. A lot of my non-teacher friends usually react the same ways I see in this thread. Nixie or you ever get with one etc. Reactions like that are how you know they're not teachers. Getting advances from students like that it's super awkward. And more than a little scary. I have multiple colleagues that have had accusations leveled against them. Some of them I have no idea how to judge. But two of them I know extremely well. Know the students involved. And know with 100% certainty that there is not a chance anything happened. Like, zero. Absolutely false. One of those guys barely managed to escape with his career. The other one didn't. He was one of the best band directors I knew. And now he's working in the business world. And hasn't picked up an instrument in years. Absolutely freaking tragic. So, you make dang sure you're never in a position where there's no witnesses. The office door is always open if a kid is talking to you. If a student's parent is late picking them up, and you would be the only one left with them, you ask one of the parents who was there on time to wait with you. It's like defensive driving except with frisky teenage girls instead of cars. There are people far more qualified than me to speak to why girls make crap like that up. I just know that they do and it scares the heck out of me. I have zero interest in getting in a situation like that and do everything I can to avoid it. If when a girl is really crushing on me, I always notice, but I have to pretend like it's not happening. Any acknowledgement is a potential problem. On a more personal note, I just don't find them attractive. When I first started teaching at 22, some seniors caught my eye, but I grew out of that super fast. They just look young. And holy crap do they act young. Women are hard enough to understand without adding the I'm discovering myself and don't know how to handle my sexuality layer. It's not attractive at all. Also, yuck, morally repugnant. Not the point of this thread, I know, but I felt like sharing. So, you make dang sure you're never in a position where there's no witnesses. That can't be stressed enough, emo. Teachers of Reddit. What's the most immature or unprofessional thing you've done because you didn't like a student? When I was teaching, disruptive kid got his PSP out during class one day. I naturally confiscated it until the end of class. Then he did it again, and again. During this semester kid had several written reprimands and was on thin ice with his parents. Around the 5th 6th time he did it, I told him I was forced to write him up for it. He begged me not to, so I didn't. And I took the PSP home and played Lego Batman that night. And the next night, I kept it for a week I think. He never took it out in class again. You should have deleted his saved games. Moved up a fun and tasty lap 3 minutes after I booted my worst ever student. He missed Esmore's stoichiometry in chemistry. Tough luck, Jesse. Science B. I once caught a student turning in essays I knew her, her mother was writing. And then her mother blatantly plagiarized an essay. As an opportunity to make up the assignment for a 50% grade, the student, i.e. mother, had to write a 10 page essay with 15 academic sources. The original was a 3 PG essay with 3 sources. I knew the mother would slave away at the thing, and she did. I can't stand parents like her. I don't know that he didn't like her, 
but my teacher had a pretty funny reaction for one of my classmates in middle school. She would not stop whining and it was starting to get really annoying. The teacher casually went over to his desk, said he had something for her, and flung a tiny object right into her lap. It was a baby's pacifier. The whole class lost it and fortunately she took it pretty well. The whining eased up for a while after that. For some reason I was expecting a tiny violin but that's even funnier. Kid was as a sociopath. Would purposefully do things to hurt other kids emotionally. Lied constantly. Including to his mother in front of my face and when called out on it, the mom laughed. She always defends his shittiness. Kid even accused my amazingly patient, super sweet friend of slamming him against a wall the year she had him. Anyway, in 17 years of teaching he is the only child I have even remotely come close to hating. After several months of his awfulness, I started waiting for days he was absent to do extra special lessons and activities that were extremely fun, just so he'd miss out on them. Then when he came in the next day, I'd have the kids write in their journals what they learned about and what they enjoyed about the activity just so he would know he missed it. You probably pavloved your other students to connecting him to boring days. This crap is impressive. I didn't mind the student but his parent wouldn't return some forms I needed signed. It was his IEP which was made at their request, so the fact that they wouldn't sign and return it so he could receive the services they were convinced he needed, drove me mad. Now, someone had donated some kazoos to be given as treasure box prizes, which I had laughed at and put away. However, I decided this kid deserved to have a kazoo. I put yet another reminder slip in his homework folder and sent him home with a kazoo, with full permission to tell his parents exactly who he had gotten it from. The IEP was returned signed the next day. Oh dang. That's right. Being so stressed I forgot about this form. I like your new kazoo buddy. Had a kid steal my pen once. Kids at my grade level don't use pens yet, and the pen was the exact same brand, style, and color that I always use. I teach in a small school and no other teacher uses that exact pen. A kid said that he found it in the hallway. Little crap knew that I couldn't prove that he stole it, so I just ignored him and went on with the lesson. Fast forward 10-15 minutes and I hear a shout from him. He had been chewing on the pen and it leaked all into his mouth. He then tries to wipe it out using his brand new shirt. Shirt gets completely ruined. I couldn't help but laugh at the ridiculousness of the situation. His sister is a year younger than him and couldn't wait to tell me the next day that the boy got his rear end tore up for ruining his new shirt. For the next month or so, whenever he didn't have a pencil I would offer to let him use one of my pens. He never took me up on the offer. You may have inadvertently cured his oral fixation. On the other hand, I have been teaching is Asia for a while now. This was during my 3 years in South Korea. I had this class of 3 middle school boys. It was one of my favorite classes, but they could be little shitheads sometimes. One day they wouldn't listen or work, they kept speaking Korean, not allowed in my class, and one kept throwing a razor bits at my face. So with 15 minutes left I gave them the silent treatment. I just opened my schedule and made random notes. At first they just started drawing on the board and having fun, but soon they were scared and tried to get my attention. When the bell rang I grabbed my stuff and left. The next time I taught them I walked into class and they had written sorry rabbi wimps teacher on the whiteboard and were all bowing to me. It was adorable and I miss that class. My high school Spanish teacher did something like that once, except for leaving at the end of class, because it was her classroom and there were more periods in the day. The class felt super guilty after a few minutes. I once told a group of high school kids that if they stopped coming to class I would pass them. These kids, about 5 of them, did nothing all year and made teaching this class impossible. They would play music and have conversations throughout the whole class period. Calls home, referrals to the dean, failing grades did nothing to change their behavior. It was about 2 weeks before they took me up on my offer and they missed the last 5 weeks of class. I still failed those suckers. Yay for happy ending. Mom was a history teacher. Get a new student mid-year from Mexico named Alberto. Tried giving him schoolwork assignments. Call on him. He always replied no sé, which means I don't know in Spanish. Frustrated by weeks of this, 
My mom vents to other teachers on her team about how the kid could possibly get a grade if he can't speak English, and they are all stunned. Uh, Mrs. XXX. Alberto speaks English. He's been fooling you. Embarrassed she gives him an assignment the next day and he pulls the same stunt. No sir. She takes a giant red marker and draws a huge F on his paper that takes up the whole page. Looks him in the eye and says, Do you comprehend now? Rest of the year he was an A student in there. That's some Peggy Hill level Spanish. I remember my third grade teacher screaming at the top of her lungs I don't get paid enough for this because a student she was working one on one with wouldn't listen. I mean, she's not wrong. Wasn't because I didn't like him, but was just annoyed in the moment. I was doing the admittedly annoying thing of holding up the class to wait for the straggler, S, to get their crap together. A kid at the front of the line said something along the lines of if you make me miss my bus, I'm gonna whoop you. Instead of writing him up, reprimanding, or ignoring him, I just turned to him a bit and said really, you think you could take me? He was very small for a 5th grader. I was 6 feet 0 inches 220. I just read through all the stories of people who killed people, so I keep expecting the stories to end with a teacher killing a student. So far so good in this thread. Me too. When I was growing up in a shitty neighborhood we had this one teacher who was friendly when he wanted to be and a tank when he wanted to be. My school had a lot of fights often, but if he was around you didn't fight. One kid though was a little crap, constantly shooting spitballs, constantly causing problems in class, and thinking back to it if he wasn't in the class everyone could have gotten an A guaranteed because half the lessons were stopped to deal with this kid's problems. Send him to the office? He'll just say no and cross his arms smiling thinking he was untouchable. Second year of high school, he was in my math class with the brutal teacher. He tried pulling the same crap there. Teacher flipped out opened the door and told him to get his scrawny butt to the office or he'll drag him there himself. The kid just kinda froze up saying I'll tell my mom. Teacher just shouts in his face I'm fricking your mom. The kid walked away. Turns out yeah, the teacher was fricking his mom because they are now married. Also the kid is in jail for rape and running over his own kid with his car. That was quite the twist end. Student was a class A dong. Okay maybe not A, but B at least or B. I was teaching assistant support staff. He was being a scrawny crap and made some yo mama style joke. I said she had died, threatened to tear up and walk out. I spent the whole freaking day ignoring and not talking to the crap. Trying my hardest to look upset at every turn. Right at the end of the day his friends come and say he is sorry, and scared. I tell them I don't care. I see him as I leave and he is clearly really upset and not happy, and comes and says sorry about what he said and he didn't mean it. Recently, I heard a conversation between two boys. Your mom is gay. A pile of ashes can't be gay. My dad, who was a history teacher, was a pretty laid back teacher, popular with the students, who usually did well in his class. Though, because this was a school dealing with some of the more disadvantaged and problematic areas of the city, he was experienced with pupils being dongs and calling him names. It's an all boys school. He could take it in the classroom, and of course would tell the pupils off in the right way. He very rarely raised his voice. One weekend, my dad was entering his house when one of his pupils saw him and called out, Hello sir, UW. My father marched across the street, grabbed the boy by the lapels, slammed him against the wall and said, You can't call me that in school. You certainly can't freaking call me that in the street. Needless to say, the boy never called him that again. Punch them in the neck. Hear me out. Not a traditional teacher, but a self-defense instructor, was running a class on defense versus knives. One thing you have to accept. If you are in a knife fight, you almost 100% will be cut. Anyway, the drill was this. Each student paired up with a partner and had to parry block the knife wielder for 2 minutes. I jokingly said anyone who makes it 2 minutes gets to teach the next class. I've got about 18 students. The drill goes on, and at the end, I ask if anyone didn't get cut at all. One guy, younger, maybe 18, 19, who was a kind of problem student raises his hand. This is a kid who always questions everything. Nice enough, but kind of a jerk. Now, his partner for the drill was an older guy, slower, and this kid was in good shape, so I could see where he might have been fast enough. 
Okay, I tell him. Taking a rubber knife, let's see. When he is ready, I come at him, and it takes all of 3 seconds before I slashed him across the midsection. This is fine. I hand him back the knife, and say something like not bad, but have your partner speed it up next time. I turned around and heard him say I bet you can't do better. I turned back and he rushed me. Several problems here. 1. Don't just randomly attack students. 2. Definitely do not attack your instructor. It's pretty disrespectful. He lunged at me full force. Rubber or not, these knives are pretty solid and can hurt. I blocked, and on pure instinct, full force punched him in the neck. He dropped, coughing. Now, since they weren't actively working, my entire class saw this. I felt terrible, but most of my students started clapping. I helped him up, and whispered don't ever pull that crap again he nodded, and at least seemed embarrassed. Never had another problem with him. Good kid, just was out of line. One of the better descriptions I heard for knife fight was, imagine you are in an all white suit, head to toe. Now imagine that your job is to take a red sharpie with no cap away from a toddler who has just been given their first mountain dew. What you're imagining that white suit looking like afterwards is about what you can expect your skin to look like after a knife fight. I work in a pre-k class. I've been told that students are normally fairly good, but I don't know from experience as this is my first year teaching and we have multiple students with severe behavioral issues. Recently, one of our students was throwing a big tantrum, on the floor, kicking, screaming, biting, spitting, you name it, so after over an hour of it, I finally said, that's how you think we act in the classroom? Fine. I get to act that way too. Before the student could respond, I dropped to the floor and started kicking and screaming. It stopped their tantrum, and I didn't have any issues with them the rest of the day. I'm big and rewarding the positive behavior and good grades in my class. I for sure don't believe in rewarding the misbehaved students just because they were good for 5 minutes. I use class dollars and a treasure box, as get $20. B's get $10, and 75 79 get $5. After a test, I'll hand out the money and one day a week, I'll call kids to do treasure box. Treasure box is $20. I have one student that is such a pain, but will magically be an angel once he sees something he wants from the treasure box. Kids know I only call the quiet students who have been doing their work all day to go first. I heard him talking about this one item he really wanted. I purposely called him last so that item was taken. Felt good. John was a class clown and constantly disrupted lessons. Does stupid things like shouting how he can see a classmate's bra through her uniform out of the blue, or stand up making monkey noises. But it was a public secret John had a huge crush on the girl sitting in front of him, constantly playing with her hair etc. Girl complained she couldn't see the board well one day. I moved her to the front row and kept John at the back. FKU John. I don't think that's unprofessional at all. Not me, but my husband who was helping to chaperone a field trip to the zoo with first graders. Since no parents signed up, we were having a bathroom break. And I was still with the girls and the boys were waiting at the tables outside with my husband. One of the boys saw my husband's phone and demanded it from him. This is how the conversation went. Boy, give me your phone. Husband, number, repeat 3x. Boy, why can't I see your phone? Husband, because it doesn't belong to you. Boy, my dad says if someone doesn't give me something, I should snatch it from them. Husband, your dad is an idiot. At first, I was worried because I'm the teacher, but part of me was like yeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
I had one student who was one of the smartest in the class but was also really mischievous and kinda mean. My favorite kid by far. Sorry in advance that this doesn't exactly answer the question cause I didn't dislike the girl at all. She was always doing stuff like trying to read out of the book I was holding while I was giving her a makeup test from that book. Not that she needed to cheat, but just to be a little crap. One day since my seat was the table behind her at the back of the room, I just started taking her in use pencil and just hiding it behind me whenever she look away. It went on for about an hour until she was digging through her pencil case in confusion and looking under her desk cause she knew she had to have been writing with something but her stuff was just magically disappearing. It didn't take her long to realize it was me and she turned around and was absolutely livid, so I just smiled and gave her back a bundle of like 10 pencils. So close to a glitch in the matrix story 10 years from now. I was the class clown. Tech decks were starting to be a thing. 7th grade math teacher thought they were annoying and banned them. I had about 12 of them and didn't care if he took one away here and there. He found my stash and took all of them apart and kept the screws. Guy was a savage. Semi unrelated but this reminded me of a story my mum told me once. She used to teach science at high school in low income area schools. She had this one class at a school that was particularly bad. Lots of kids skipping school, smoking drugs starting at the age of 12 behind the school at break times, loads of terrible behavior and bullying. You get the picture. Despite all of the crap she put up with and dealt with from students including one throwing an entire desk at her, she had this one crap brain. Satan spawn little toe rag who made her whole life heck. He would verbally abuse her daily, consistently lie about beating up younger kids, never did his homework, drew dongs on her desk and left moldy food in the cupboards, stole her phone, twice, and was just an angry angry young man. She's had lots of experience in social work and in teaching and has more compassion than the rest of my family put together so she tried everything to try and understand and work with this boy but nothing worked. Eventually she resorted to calling in the boy's father, something she had tried to do by issuing the boy with a slip of paper that unsurprisingly never reached home. Getting permission from the head, asked her to directly contact the boy's family a meeting was set up. So the day of the meeting came. My mum was rather apprehensive as an alarmingly large, heavily scarred man walked in and sat down across from her dragging his son behind him. My mother began to calmly explain all of the things the boy did regularly in class leaving out the worst of it. Apparently the father sat silently nodding his head as she spoke and never making eye contact with her or his son the entire time. The boy was denying everything with what mum described as a slightly panicked voice. At the end of the meeting the man got up thanked mum and left. The boy wasn't seen at school for 4 whole days and when he finally came back he was covered in bruises. The boy never hassled mum again but I think she carries rather a lot of guilt from the whole situation. TLDR my mum called the boy's father to come in after a lot of struggle. The boy came back to school a week after the meeting with many bruises. He never bothered her again. The father sat silently nodding his head as she spoke and never making eye contact with her or his son the entire time. This is just a post but I could feel that tension dang. I taught middle school for 7 years and dealing with 8th graders can be a bit trying. I had this one male student who whined about everything. Every assignment, project, lecture involved some level of whining from this particular kid. He was a good looking football jock who was just lazy when it came to academics. At some point while he was being particularly annoying I looked at him and said settle down Francis. Not his real name and if you've ever seen the movie Stripes you'll recognize the line. It was immediately obvious that the name bugged the crap out of him. From that moment forward I started calling him Francis on a daily basis just to irritate him and he hated the name. I told my wife about it who was his math teacher at the time and she started calling him Francis as well. Soon all of his peers at school started addressing by Francis as well. I got such joy hearing people walking down the hall yell out hey Francis and seeing the irritated look on his face every time he heard the name. I have a million other stories on how I subtly flicked with irritating students over the years but that is one of my favorites. That's amazing. I would love to hear some more of your stories. Not me, but father, semi verbatim. He was subbing for a special ed class. Student was late to class. Policy is to give a tardy slip. He argued. Refused to admit he was late. Continued to argue as he handed out that day's assignment to the point where he had to address the outbursts. 
Finally, he had no choice but to write him up, which made him angrier, pushing him to lose my cool, he said. Do you want me to write down on the referral, so and so, is being a jackass a kid, to his credit came back instantly with I don't know, can you spell jackass, to dad's credit, he immediately responded, of course I can spell jackass, I'm not the one in special ed, tardy slipped a special ed, hey you're now extra tardy. I was the student, I went to a weird art program that was in a block of buildings on the campus of a regular public high school for my first semester of 9th grade, I had a drawing teacher that made my life a living heck, class started at 6.30am and every goddamn day was spent with him laying into me, my friends who were also in the program, as well as the life drawing teacher, noticed that he was unusually hard on me but nothing was ever done, he'd tell me my work was garbage. Any compliments about my work were backhanded, he'd raise his voice, he'd tell me that I should quit, so I did, it drove 13 year old me to give up art. Fast forward to the end of senior year and I'm a student at the regular old public high school the art program was at, I get a message in my homeroom that I need to go to the art academy block by that drawing teacher, he took me into his office, sat me down, and started crying. I'm so sorry, my wife and I, we had a baby to save the marriage, between the baby and the early morning class time, I was so tired and angry and I took it out on you, I don't know why it was you, but it was, etc, 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 I just kinda said what's done is done and went back to class but, man, that was by far the most unprofessional thing I'd ever encountered, if I were vindictive. I would have gone to the principal or something, but I didn't. Instead, I just gave up on art. That's just so rough man. No one wins in this scenario no matter what happens. This is a prime example of why we should never contribute to bad energy, for lack of a better word, to people around, as satisfying as it can be sometimes. I had a student parent duo I couldn't stand last year. The child was helpless because her mother babied her so much. All year everything I said was wrong. Her daughter was perfectly fine. I didn't know what I was doing because I was a new teacher. The kid literally told me once when she was in trouble that she didn't care because her mom said it was okay to get in trouble in my class because the behaviors I deemed bad weren't actually bad. So the last day of school there was an award ceremony and the mom was pee her kid wasn't getting an award so she said she wasn't going to send her to school. I told all the kids if they didn't come to school that day they wouldn't get the amazing gifts I was giving out and their memory books. There was no amazing gift, it was a bag of junk. I just wanted to force her hand because the principle of the matter. She showed up. She's actually not returning to my school next year. Apparently the problems with her child are the fault of the school, not her parenting. Teachers of Reddit, what is the strangest note you have had to write home to parents? My mother had to write a note home about one of her kindergartens to her father, basically the gist of what she had to say was your child has an obsession with asking people about how big their pee pee is, and following up in saying my dad's is bigger, yep, proudest dad in the world I bet. As a swim coach to young kids, some as young as 6, I once had to write a note to the tooth fairy. One of my 6 year olds lost her tooth while swimming and freaked out. Swim practice came to a screeching halt as I had to put together a search party for the tooth. The kid scoured the pool bottom and to no avail, the tooth was not recovered. Her mom was out of town and the girl began to cry frantically, because without a tooth. She wouldn't get anything from the tooth fairy. Another mom who witnessed the events came up to me with some stationery and I wrote a note to the tooth fairy listing the events that had happened ensuring the fairy that indeed, Ella had lost her tooth and was entitled to her prize. TL. DR. 6 years old girl loses tooth at swim practice. I write a letter to the tooth fairy. Not a note, but I once had to call a parent to explain that I'd confiscated their son's cell phone because he was using it in class. I explained that he claimed to have been day trading. I thought he was being a smartass. His dad says oh my god. He promised he was going to stop that. That's his college fund. Your son tried to milk a female student during the cow presentation. Story. My fiancée is a first grade teacher and had to write a note home at the beginning of the school year for one of her students. At the start of the school year, she has to send a letter home asking the parents to provide basic school supplies like colored pencils, 
markers, hand sanitizer, tape, etc. She had a student take charge and collect the supplies from around the house himself. The student brought in hand sanitizer and used it before heading to lunch. The hand sanitizer wouldn't evaporate and was making his hands warm. He had brought in a small bottle of KY2 in one warming gel. My fiancé couldn't stop laughing while she wrote the note to his parents. Similar incident at a friend's school. She asked that the kids bring in pasta, elbows or wagon wheels, something small. For an art project, one kid bought in a bag of novelty penis shaped pasta. I believe these were grade 2 students. I was conducting a science lab using a diluted billiard solution, a strong base. One student spilled some in a chair and didn't tell me. A girl in the class sat down in it, and soon started feeling burning itching irritation in the affected area. I ran her across the hall to the office and got a female staff member to take her to the bathroom with instructions to get her jeans off and rinse the affected area. By the time I returned to the room, another student who had witnessed the event had decided to pour the solution on his hand to see what would happen. I had to write a note home to all the parents explaining the whole incident. So my friend Dan worked at a daycare preschool during one of his summers off from college. He had a 3 year old student, Jack that would frequently grab his junk and growl. Well one day, the kids are changing for swimming lessons and Jack is running around the class naked. The teachers are trying to wrangle him in when all of a sudden, he grabs his junk, growls, and then smacks a little girl in the face with his penis. Dan had to make an incident report for this, and not knowing what to say, writes Jack made an appropriate contact with another student, when Jack's mom came to pick him up, she asked what inappropriate contact was and Dan had to tell her what happened, to which she simply replied, oh my, a week later Jack was pulled out of the school, a tl, dr, kid dong slapped a little girl in the face, comma oh my, read this like George Take. I was sent home with a note in second grade. The note simply read, if Drew 707 is going to eat that much garlic at home, please have him bring some for the rest of the class. The night before, my mom wasn't home and I asked dad for a snack. He roasted a large head of garlic and gave me some crackers to eat with it. Apparently I reeked. Haha <laughs> your dad is funny. My parents got a call from my teacher when I was in 4th grade because I said in class that when people get sad they drink their sorrows away with alcohol. I hadn't realized the question was what do you do when you're sad. Not a note, but a very panicked phone call. The backstory is that I was really more of a mom to my little brother, and I was his emergency contact because it was easier for me to leave school than my mom to leave work after my parents divorced. There was a sign out sheet whenever you picked your kid up, and being a sarcastic type I would sign him out for all sorts of ridiculous reasons whenever he had a doctor's appointment or something, which was often. Because kids, you know, anyway, I'm talking zombie apocalypse H and blow ninja training. This went on for years. The only one we ever got a phone call about was a pretty innocuous Blues Brothers reference. Mission from God an office aide called my mom in a panic to make sure me and the kid weren't going to blow some stuff up, I guess. My mother of course laughed the whole thing off, and I signed him out as mission from definitely not God next time and no one said a thing. I always thought that it was pretty messed up that they didn't bat an eye at H and blow. This is great. If I was the receptionist, I'd probably figure that you two were going on a church sponsored event. Friend of mine works with kids at a primary school. Last week he had to send a note saying that the kid had inserted a crayon in another kid's anus. Rara back in elementary school I got suspended for blowing bubbles in the bathroom. They had handed them out for Halloween and I just wanted to blow them. The weirdest part is that the principal cited that it was a choking hazard on the note home to my parents. When I showed them the note they had a good hearty laugh and on the day of my suspension I went to see 101 Dalmatians in the movies. A close friend of mine is a rather attractive 7th grade science teacher. There have been enough incidents, read. He be jerking it, with one student that he was required to have a classmate on his desk with outlines of his hands so they wouldn't wander below the desk while she was teaching. His parents were surprisingly, not shocked. Not my story but my dad's who was principal at my high school. There was a kid who was suspected, known to be, dealing weed to other year 10s one day. Naturally, dad went with the kid to his locker and told him to empty his backpack. 
One of the items he pulled out was a small metal box which given the situation is obviously sus. The kid was told to open the box, but he refused, ran to the nearest rubbish bin and emptied the contents. He was visibly distressed. Thinking he had him done for, dad went over to the bin, stuck his hand in and pulled out a massive handful of pubes. Apparently the kid was so embarrassed that his mum might find out he'd shaved his privates that he decided to carry them on his person everywhere. He got a letter sent home about failing to follow instructions from a teacher. I can only imagine what the letter said. What a great diversion to draw attention away from his drug stash. A teacher had to write a weird note about me when I was in grade 3-4. I was playing in this jungle gym thing made of tires, and I was climbing out of the tire you see. My friend said H A, it's like you're crawling out of a vagina. To which my other friend replied to a girl who was maybe 10-15 feet away hey Nicole. Cairo DCK wants to climb out of your vagina. She told my teacher and I got in trouble. Even though I didn't say anything. My mom got a note from my teacher saying that I wanted to climb into the girl's vagina and that I shouldn't be thinking that way. But in all fairness. She's really hot now and I'd so get in that. I used to be a pretty weird chick. The whole anime fan girl thing. Well I had a phase where I wore cat ears all the time and would meow. No teacher or my parents ever cared since I was a pretty awesome student. But one day my baby brother goes to kindergarten and proceeds to only meow because I would meow at him all the time. His teacher wrote my parents a letter. My mom framed it and has it in her office. Because it is hilarious. Doc Talkic's brother refuses to participate in class discussions and only meows. He calls the entire class to meow and is being very disruptive. He gives me crap for it to this day when my family brings it up to mock him. My wife is a teacher. One day after a science lesson involving scales, she had to write a note home saying, Your son was very disruptive today. He frequently said that we should weigh our excrement on the scales and give a prize to whomever had the biggest BM. I laughed so hard that I made her save the note. I have multiple copies that I frequently show to friends now. My mother is a classroom assistant and works with special needs kids. My favorite story of hers is of the kid that licked things. He would lick his desk, the walls, anything really. So one day she had to send this note home. Comma kid's name was removed from carpet time today because he would not stop licking another student's hair. I was really hoping for wouldn't stop licking the carpet here. I was a teacher in a primary school once, and I had this situation. When I was unexpectedly called out of the classroom and came back, I noticed that the students stole my handbag and notes from my desk and hid them somewhere. It took me a lot of threats and persuasion to finally get them back. I wrote a note the parents of the culprits saying that their children were already starting to experiment with theft. One of the parents called back to me and she gave out that they didn't give a sh because taking the current economical situation in our country, we'll all have to start to steal to be able to survive. I guess that I wasn't very successful at teaching somebody on morality that time. When I was in third grade, I wanted to breed fruit flies. I did what any third grader who wants fruit flies would do. I let oranges rot in my desk. That was an interesting time for my teachers. I wanted to grow mold so I had a jar of molding jam in my desk. 5th graders would have been besties. When my son was in preschool, I received a note from the teacher that he had been put in timeout for whatever infraction. He was placed behind the teacher's desk while she tended to the rest of the class. He disassembled her chair, with no tools. I also received a parent-teacher meeting along with that note. In kindergarten my boyfriend and I went into the bathroom together. He then proceeded to take my dress off. At that point the other kids in my class realized we were missing and started messing with the light switch, which was outside the door. As I was apparently more scared of the dark than running around in my birthday suit I sprinted out into the middle of the classroom in nothing but my Wednesday underwear. My parents got a letter warning them of inappropriate behavior and the importance of wearing underwear with the correct day of the week as it had been a Monday. My boyfriend had apparently also pulled the same stunt with my best friend earlier in the day. So that was a fun little main age choice talk. TL. DR. Some dudes learn how to pimp at a real young age. And day of the week underwear is super treacherous. Sounds like maybe he might have had some inappropriate crap going on at home. I had 16 years old cut his hair. 
throw it on the girl in front of him, then make snipping noises by her ear. That was my strangest call home. That's actually a really clever prank, assuming you don't mind losing some hair yourself. There was once this kid that may have been mildly retarded but everyone treated him as a normal kid so he was in all normal classes. One day during human growth and development or sex ed, we were watching a cartoon video on masturbation and about halfway through the video we hear a scream from a female classmate followed by the entire class running out of the class. It turns out he wanted to try what he saw in the movie. This kid has also been caught for wiping boogers in his hair and on other people. Parents must have got a lot of weird letters home. Yeah that's definitely not a mentally stable person. Well I'm not a teacher but when I was in kindergarten I got in trouble for throwing goose crap at another kid. My teacher sent me home with a note for my parents. My parents had no idea what to do. So they just told me to wash my hands. It was never spoke of again. I little water clears us of this deed. I don't know it just reminded me of that line in Macbeth. I think I was in grade 7 at this point. Every year the female GR8s go to the local high school for a women's sports day, and afterwards they get a gift bag which contains some candy, deodorant and tampons. Well me being the very mature 13 year old I was, I found out that if you push the back of the tampon applicator the actual tampon comes flying out. So I was basically shooting people with tampons. So the next day I get on the bus and the bus driver starts bitching about how she found tampons on the bus. She knew it was me so when we got to school she took me to the office and told the principal. Oh. Long story short he called my parents about the incident and my mom makes fun of me every day for getting in trouble by shooting tampons at people. Hello. Mrs. Grahman? Yes. Your son was shooting tampons at people and he's in trouble. I am not a teacher but I can only imagine how difficult it was for the author of this particular note. Friend of mine, at the time, was really into masturbating freshman year of HS and one time during PE, decided that he would beat off behind the bleachers. Turns out he was beating off into a shuttlecock. It was badminton day. He comes out from behind the bleachers and just launches the shuttlecock and semen flies everywhere. He is promptly escorted to the principal's office. I can only imagine what it was like to write that letter. There's probably a joke about shuttlecock in there somewhere. How about just depressing? My wife has written variations of, has a 0% average for the semester because he did not turn in any work or take any tests. This quarter only attended my class 3 times, left my classroom in the middle of class, entered another classroom, and struck another student. Really needs to get his crap together, is a silly name for a child but he shouldn't let it hold him back. In maybe second grade, I had fallen down I think at recess and sent to the nurse's office. As far as I can remember, I think it just scrapped my thigh, but for some reason I had to go. The nurse needed to spray something on the area, probably disinfectant, and told me I needed to drop my pants. I was maybe 7 so I didn't see the big deal. I dropped M. She sprayed me and I was allowed back to recess. She was very impressed though that I was so brave to drop my pants and called my mom to let her know. I can only imagine how odd that was for my mom to hear the school nurse talk about how brave her 7 year old son was to drop his pants for her. I'm having a bit of trouble believing the nurse thought you were brave just for dropping your pants for her. She likely just told your mother how brave you were for not freaking out when she put disinfectant on. Unless the nurse had a thing for children with dropped pants. In which case I'll leave quietly. A note wasn't sent home that I know of, but I went to a conservative Christian school and there was a special ed kid that everyone tried to treat normally. We were in health class, and the subject of sex came up. That hilarious bastard just blurts out so that's what it's called when my daddy chases my mommy around the house. The entire class was silent for a minute, then erupted in laughter. Not me but a classmate. So this guy, let's call him Joe has been keeping one of those mayo packets in his desk for a while now. So one day in class, he takes it out and starts to play with it, just kinda flipping it around and stuff. All of a sudden, we hear this pop, I look over and see, Joe's face covered with mayonnaise. I don't think the teacher wanted to write him up, but here's why the report said, instead of doing assigned work, Joe popped a mayonnaise packet under his desk. Mayo went everywhere. 
This will probably get buried, unless there are some kind of people reading the new comments. Kind of the opposite. I had to bring my parents a note home in preschool because my friend and I got suspended for threatening to hit my teacher over the head with a vacuum cleaner. According to the note, we weren't singing and dancing with the rest of the kids so we were kept inside for playtime. We sat outside our teacher's office, who just so happened to be the principal, and plotted about how we were going to hit her over the head with a vacuum. Keep in mind, we were 3-4 at the time. My mom recently found the letter, and the teacher had written. I kid you not, I have never been more afraid for my life. Three year olds. To the student, not the parents, as I teach at E, please refrain from using fart jokes in your future academic writing. My biology teacher wrote up my friend because, my gayness was distracting him from across the room. He said he could feel my gayness from across the room. I was at a teacher's conference and there were a pupil that had a short presentation about social media, and he actually opened the front page of Reddit in front of 1200 teachers and a live internet stream. It could have been a pretty awkward moment, but he did get away with it though. Nothing too bad on the front page. Would have been a great note though, showed P to 1200 teachers. Would have been funny if his Reddit was only subscribed to our hente, our lolican, our gore, and our yif. I had to call a student's parents because he was drawing dongs all over other kids papers. I warned him that I had to call. He was a junior in high school, and told him that if he broke the news first, it would probably go smoother. When I called, I calmly explained to his mom that he had been drawing crude penises everywhere. She was quiet for a moment, and then replied. That's what he was saying. When he called me I thought he said he was drawing peanuts. The next day, the kid finds me and says that morning at breakfast, his dad was at the table reading the paper when he sat down. Dad creases the paper down and says, you think you're freaking funny, drawing dongs on people's papers? You're done. Uh, something like 8% of kids do it, but whatever. I used to take peanut butter and a spoon to school for lunch cause I was, kind of am still, a picky freaking kid. I did this for a while and ended up making a necklace with a plastic spoon on the end. My friends liked it and I ended up making more and sharing my peanut butter. Well once it got big enough the administration clearly had to put a stop to this. The VP confronted me in the hallway and made me give up my spoon. I did it again and so did everyone else. They took everyone's spoons. Said we could no longer do it. I argued it was for my lunch and they didn't give a dang. They said that it was drug paraphernalia. A freaking plastic spoon on boondoggle around my neck. Mine wasn't so much a note sent home, but a little tidbit added to the school handbook banning plastic spoons on necklaces. That's right, I got plastic spoon necklaces banned from my junior high. That was 13 years ago. My brother went to that same school 2 years back. Guess what rule is still in their handbook? School admins are idiots ha 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 ha. The vice principal at my HS called my parents to tattle on me. They reinstated the pledge of allegiance after years of not doing it. Not sure why. And when the kid who sat behind me didn't say it, I didn't either just to see what would happen. All the kids who didn't recite the pledge were sent to the VP's office. I overheard the kid say that he was Jewish and it was against his religion to say the words under God and they let him go without incident. My turn was up next so I told him that I was an atheist and I didn't believe in God and saying the pledge was against my beliefs. The VP flipped his lid, got right in my face and said things to me like, how can you look at yourself in the mirror every morning and you're a disgrace, etc, etc. I was a drum major in the marching band, not a majorette, big difference and he asked me how I could salute the US flag during football games when the national anthem was played and I replied coldly, because it's my job, I thought the top of his head was going to blow right off, a little backstory, I was really just doing it to rile this guy up as he was a real jerkwood and he didn't like me because my older brother was a notorious troublemaker while I was a straight A student and very involved in lots of extracurriculars. The VP was desperate to catch me doing something wrong and had tried and failed to mess with me in other ways throughout HS. It really was a weird Ferris Bueller kind of situation. Looking back at it, dude had some issues. Anyway, VP called my house and got my stepdad, ranted on for a while about how they should pull me from marching band and other unkind things. My stepfather replied gruffly, 
I don't give a crap what she does, not getting any satisfaction there. The VP went to my music teacher demanding I be removed from band and he politely refused, saying that it was my choice and that my job with the band was completely separate. That guy was the single most influential teacher I ever had. Long story, but it was gratifying to be supported when I was bucking the system such as it was then. ETA, I'm getting a lot of comments about fairness etc. And, I'm realizing I should have mentioned that this happened around 1990. Things were pretty different then, so just as a frame of reference. As a Canadian, I find the idea of saying the Pledge of Allegiance every day, or actually at all, kind of creepy. We did play the national anthem every day at one of my high schools, but we didn't have to sing along or anything, and I think that's pretty weird too. Nationalism is weird, and I don't know that I think it belongs in public schools any more than religion does. Middle school teachers, what is the cringiest thing you've seen a student do? Director of technology here. I don't really have much to do with the kids at the school I work at, but I definitely have a cringy moment. Called down to the middle school from my office to debug a problem for a teacher. The classrooms in this building all have two doors. One door opens into the building hallways, the other opens to the outside. My office is across a field from the middle school, so I decide to just cut across the field and enter the side door to the classroom instead of going all the way around the field and entering the classroom from the hallway. Bear in mind that these outside doors are almost never used by anyone except for an occasional fire drill. I open the door and step in to see a room full of students facing away from me and towards their teacher. The student closest to me scrambles to click X on her browser but not before I see full on. Hardcore. Yayo e hante. Did I mention I work at a Christian private school? She turns bright red and with visibly trembling hands she closes her laptop lid. I burst out laughing, which interrupted the class. The teacher looks to me in questioning confusion and the students stare in silence. I casually walked over to her and said, loudly enough for the classroom to hear, let's not look at memes and Facebook jokes at school guys. Her flush red face contorted with fear suddenly relaxed. Her trembling hand stilled. I laughed again and went and debugged the wireless access point issue I was called down for. No point getting her expelled over hormonal changes and curiosity. Dude, you saved that poor girl's existence. If people she knew found out about that and she got punished her for it, she would have wanted to die. Valentine's Day and a boy brings a girl a dozen roses. They were both in my homeroom, so I watched this all go down right in front of me. I had literally never seen these two have a conversation before, either. Girl didn't know what to do with roses at 7am so she threw the roses in the trash can literally 20 seconds after it happened and went on her merry way. The boy never found out. I hope he had a rose bush, because otherwise roses are expensive as freak. We had this one kid in our 8th grade class stick his entire hand in a cake that was being passed around for a party. Grab a chunk and started eating it like a Neanderthal. It was chocolate and his face was covered. When he finished his chunk of cake with everyone looking in disgust he then proceeded to lick every finger. It was torture watching. He also ended up being the kid that threatened to blow up the school at the end of the year. If you have any way of contacting said kid, tell him I said he's a C. What kind of twisted human being sticks his hand into a cake? Around the 8th grade dance season, they call it prom. There is a whole lot of cringiness roaming the halls. One popular tactic among the boys was explained to me. We ask the girl to prom, and then we run away so she can't say number. Taps temple. I caught the student on Google search attempting to look me up. He spelled my name wrong and my name is very common so I wasn't worried. I sent him home since it was an after school homework club and then went through the rest of the history which included boobs naked women Megan Fox nudes and Megan Fox panties. One of the other students in the class kind of picked up on what was happening and mentioned that he has also been kicked out of the public library for similar reasons. Once a friend of mine described his quest as a kid breaking into puberty, trying to figure out P. He described how he would google boobs and variable equivalents and not getting much. It was honestly the most relatable, and funny, story ever. He was telling it in spiritual life class. There was always this kid that would go up to guys, shake their hands and deeply sniff their necks. One day a teacher asked why he did this to guys and all he said was if I did it to girls it would be weird. To be fair, the kid had a point. 
I once offered a boy a My Little Pony color by number sheet, ran out of Super Mario. The boy's response, Mr. I'm not gay, I'm a lesbian, I like girls. Well done. I was demonstrating convection, which included burning some newspaper. One kid piped up with hum, that smells like incest. He meant incense. They were too young to get it, but I nearly died trying not to laugh. Maybe that kid's siblings burn newspaper while they smash. My husband teaches English at a middle school. He brought some creative writing assignments home to grade, and since I'm an assistant teacher for much younger humans, kindergarten, he drafted me into helping him sort through the mess and grade them. We've made good progress through the stack when I pick up a paper that had a kiss mark near the name in lipstick. Okay, that's odd, but I'm used to working with kids who are only just figuring out bathroom habits. A little lipstick on a report is hardly weird in my book, plus middle school. Then I see the name, Hun, who is our husband, without missing a beat. R is this goth kid who looks like a rainbow threw up on him after having marathon sex with a unicorn. I look back at the kiss mark. Glitter lipstick. Nice shade choice if the kid is going for goth pale. I read his creative writing assignment. I get up halfway through to go pour myself more wine. It's extremely well written gapey featuring my husband and another teacher at the school. The kid is going places. I don't know what those places are, but he's going places. I had a student who would constantly butt into people's conversations, and when they asked him to mind his own business he'd stand up and proclaim nobody likes me, everyone thinks I'm so annoying, haha <laughs> and he'd laugh while everyone awkwardly stared at him. Another kid literally told me one time that he would just act annoying so that he could impress a certain group of boys. They were not impressed. Comma nobody likes me, everyone thinks I'm so annoying, haha, <laughs> well, at least he is honest with himself. I had a 6th grader lick a book, he definitely tried to keep it on the DL, so he looked around, made sure no one was looking in his direction, and then licked the book, it was a tongue poke, then a full out lick up the spine of the book. I had a classmate who had to give a presentation using powerpoint, so there is a computer hooked up to a projector that is pointed at a screen that fills the wall. This guy sticks his USB with his presentation and the computer and it automatically loads the images he had on it in a gallery. He had a full folder of pictures of girls from his class he had downloaded from Facebook. That was kinda awkward. This has to be the most genuinely awkward thing I've read in this entire thread. My mom is a middle school English teacher. Once, a student snuck a bar of soap into her class, ate it, and proceeded to run out of the classroom and start vomiting. Apparently, he did it to impress his friends. One of the kids responded to questions like Pikachu. Shame that a good kid is going to look back on those days with absolute horror. Jokes on you. She never let anyone stop her from reaching her dreams. And now she is a Raichu. Not a student in particular, but a whole bunch of them. I was a substitute teacher for a few years on my university breaks, but last January was the worst middle school day I've ever had. 8th grade science class. I ask the kids to open their textbooks and work on the assignment. A girl shyly raises her hand and says miss, there's something inappropriate in my book. Of course, some kid drew a dong. I calmly tell her to erase it and move on. Three more kids say the same thing. I say if you have something inappropriate in your book. Please just erase it. Every kid starts whining about how there's dongs in their books. Since they won't shut up about it, I take the offending books and replace them with different books from the back of the room. Every. Single. Book. Had a huge dong drawn in it. All 90 something of them. Crudely drawn dongs. Artistic dongs. Squidward freaking Spongebob. You name it. It was there. The kids rioted. I almost quit. Squidward freaking Spongebob. I am less than 15 comments into this thread and I'm already dying. I taught 4th grade last year, and I had a student who was 12 years old, middle school age, held back a few years. She always did very odd things to try to impress her classmates, but they were relatively tame, until there was a line in the bathroom and she took her pants off, squatted over the trash can and peed. 4 or 5 girls came running out of the bathroom and told on her, Sometimes the students telling on each other can be cringy enough. 
I once confiscated what I first thought was a note being passed in class, but turned out to be a gay fanfic one of my students wrote, pairing two of her classmates. Tweak x Craig. Had an 8th grade girl pretend to pass out because she was upset. She got written up for screaming that another girl was a freaking bee in the middle of a science lesson. Then got upset when that other girl didn't also get in trouble for looking at her wrong. In the dean's office she was so upset that she pretended to faint. Complete with back of the palm to the forehead and dramatic exhale. And then laid on the floor until we were forced to call an ambulance. Before the ambulance came, mom walked in. She worked right across the street, and said, Damn it Jennifer, we're not doing this again so evidently this was a regular happening around their house. At this point, the girl squinted her eyes open but refused to actually get up. When the squad got there, they checked her vitals and basically knew she was fine. They had to take her because we can't take chances with this stuff in schools. We all just kind of looked at each other and shrugged. So, yeah, that was cringy. We get drug seekers who fake seizures a lot. This medic once told me about an adoc who called him over to the doorway after bringing one in and says watch this before saying loud enough for the patient, who was faking a seizure right there. I'm not sure if it's a real seizure because she didn't pee her pants right on cue she pisses herself. I will relay a short story that my 7th grade bio teacher told us. In that class we dissected a cow eyeball, the year before us. A student pocketed the lens of the eye. Looks like a yellowish hard thing about the size of a peanut M&M. In his next class he stood up and swallowed it in front of everyone. Another teacher told me about a student he had who would come to school in different costumes. Ninja, soldier, etc. And stay in character the whole day. I do not remember the details but there was an incident in which he threw throwing stars during a talent show. The eye story actually made me gag. In 6th grade science class, our teacher asked if anyone knew what the arms of an octopus were called and this kid immediately raised his hand and blurted out testicles everyone was laughing including the teacher, who also snorted. His face was so red. Kid wore clothes to school with the price tags sticking out. When asked why I was informed that this was to let everyone know he was wearing new clothes. You should tell them that it doesn't really count unless you staple the sales slip to the front of your shirt. Got another one. A girl masturbated in class using the edge of the seat. Not discreet either as many of her peers had a WTF look on their faces. This girl was sweating hard. Seriously most uncomfortable office meeting and parent conference. I work for a private school. This middle schooler recently started dating another one. The girl decided to come to school in a black leather miniskirt and black leather tank top combo. At recess, which I watched because it's a small school, she was dancing all around in front of her boyfriend and hanging of the fence a stripper. It was hilarious and so cringy. I had a student from a conservative Muslim family wear white see-through sweatpants with a visible black thong on underneath. She brought the clothes to school and changed in the bathroom before class started. One student wanted to ask me if I had a doppelganger. What he actually said was, do you have a dingleberry? I also had a girl ask me what food stamps were, which isn't surprising because the district is very affluent. I explained, but she still seemed confused, so she asked what it means to blow a trucker for food stamps. Evidently she was reading a book meant for a more mature audience, and her worldly knowledge hadn't caught up to her reading level yet. Now I'm self-consciously thinking of all the things I did that make me want to collapse in upon myself like a dying star. But see this is comforting to me to see how common embarrassing crap is in middle schools. Makes me feel better about my own embarrassments. Oh I just thought about another. They were talking about dank memes which were about banned class BTW. I was told, Mrs. Confuzzle Deb don't look up dank memes okay. I told them that I had been on the internet since before they were born. I was born into the dankness. I was molded by it. You merely adopted the dankness. By the time you found B, I was already a man. There was the student who had his hands in his pants, moving his hand up and down almost to a rhythm. That was cringy. I just stared at him in the eye till he noticed that I knew, and then he stopped. I had one of those. He wasn't allowed to wear pants or shorts with elastic waistbands after a while. 
I organized an activity that was sort of like never have I ever, but positive and meant to build empathy. Basically, a student would say you're in my boat if, and whatever they say that is the same as you, you have to stand up and find another chair. Great activity. One of the girls, who I often found puzzling because she just did and said things that were nonsensical, started her period and got blood all over multiple chairs. Some kids start looking at the seats and have no idea what's going on. The girls in the class figure it out, but don't say anything. They just avoid said tainted chairs. The boys, however, are as dumb as a box of rocks and are touching it and sitting in the seats. I'm sitting there horrified, since one, that's disgusting too. I didn't initially know who was pulling a carry in 3. How the heck do I nonchalantly stop the activity to get this biohazard cleaned up and no one really notices? After a short observation of the students, I noticed that the one girl was the unfortunate cause of all this. I told her that she was to do a favor for me, and I stepped outside. I asked her if she knew that she started her period, and she said yes. I sent her to the office and then went back in the room for damaged control. I honestly don't know how I concocted a magical excuse, but I told all the kids that we were invited to go to the library for silent reading time but had to go now because all the good squishy seats would be taken if they didn't hustle. They believed me, and I sent them down there. A few girls stayed behind that figured out what happened, and I told them I knew and sent them as well. I finally get on the phone and inform the unfortunate janitor about the bloodbath in my room. When I had my period at school I was constantly paranoid about standing up and there being blood all over my chair. It happening while playing some kind of weird musical chairs is like some horrific nightmare. Not sure if this counts. Had a student projectile vomit in the middle of class. This is in middle school. Poor girl sat in the middle of the room. Vomit managed to get into the seats next to, in front of, and behind her own. Somehow. So much bath and so much shame in that little girl. But then she didn't want to go to the office. She just wiped off her mouth and wanted to stay. This student spent an entire semester speaking in a Russian accent for an experiment. No one questioned him. First day back from winter break. He is back to talking normal. We were all incredibly confused and his parents ended up going to the superintendent about our school allowing bullying. A Korean guy at my high school randomly started talking in a British accent around junior year and kept it up until graduation. Sometimes he would talk in his normal voice. I teach history and let my students do a powerpoint presentation on the history on anything. Some kid did the history of furries. He came to class wearing his fur suit. I teach high school now. I teach 8th grade, this student had talked to me previously in private about how the girl he liked was in my class the same period he was. He said that they had almost dated when they were both at their previous school before transferring to the one where I teach. On top of that, all the other students were aware that he had a major crush on this girl. So, one day, he finished his class walk early and apparently he just couldn't take the hormones raging inside of him anymore. He blurts out, loud enough for everyone in class to hear, look, girl's name, are you gonna date me or what I pretend to work through this while cringing so hard on the inside. I see every other student in the room work through this, from shock to laughter to pure amazement and curiosity as to both why he would choose this moment and what on earth her response would be. The girl very politely said, I'm just not looking for a relationship right now, thanks for asking though, TL. Dr. A kid asked his crush out loudly in front of the class only to be rejected. That's pretty mature rejection for 8th grade. Had a kid who legitimately believed he was a Sith. Like from Star Wars. His helicopter mom would come flying down to the school crying religious discrimination if you told him otherwise. He would relax his throat and talk in a deep voice and say it was his real voice but he disguised his voice to not scare his human brethren. On free dress days he'd wear an all denim outfit with high waters and denim vest over a denim shirt. I had him for science so he'd blurt out things about alchemy from an anime he was into whenever we were working with a periodic table. He also had a girlfriend who lived in Mexico, who was also his cousin. Humankind cannot gain anything without first giving something in return. To obtain, something of equal value must be lost. That is alchemy's first law of equivalent exchange. In those days, we really believed that to be the world's one, and only truth. After 10 years of middle school, I should had a novel's worth. 
However, so many years of middle school decimates your brain and as someone else said, middle schoolers are generally cringy most of the time. But the kid who wrote Mrs. Sharpnet loves cockies on the board when he sincerely meant to write cookies definitely ranks high up there. Though, we all cringed that day. I agree with the desensitization that comes with being a middle school teacher. I've taught 8th grade for 10 years. I really don't have one cringe moment that really stands out. They just become part of normal life in an 8th grade classroom. Sigh. Not a teacher, but in 7th grade biology we dissected rats, and the teacher warned that they might be juicy from preservatives, so I grabbed my dead rat, turned it over in the air and shouted you gotta squeeze the pudding out of it my lab mate fainted as brown juices poured onto the table. I am now an adult biologist who does not do quite the same stuff. Oh my god, I'm just squealed in my bed at 2am. Thank you. Thank you so much. Walked in bathroom because there was a commotion while my students were in there. This boy has his pants around his ankles, pointing at his junk with both hands, asking all passers-by, who wants to touch? I said, student's name, pull your pants up, while shaking my head, and I walked out. He came out after with a bright red face, saying, Mr. Fingerlinger, I swear I'm not gay no need for a consequence, as he was embarrassed enough. Kids pick their nose and usually eat what they pick while I'm teaching. I think they forget that I can see them while I'm at the front of the class talking. Not a teacher, but I interned with one recently. Apart from the kid who insisted on being called Frisk. Undertale, I guess. But the craze had died down so it was just weird. There was one girl who wore a cat ear headband. Kinda cute. Since they were the metal silhouette type that kids wear. But she paired it with a freaking cat tail. A big, black and white, furry cat tail. I, am in high school and know someone exactly like this. She's crazy and smells bad and insists I am her best friend. I hold both grass fear and hatred for this girl. Not a teacher but when I was in school those track pants with snaps down the side were popular. The boys would try to yank the pants off each other during class changes, and they all wore basketball shorts underneath. One day some guy thought it would be funny to rip off a girl's track pants. However she didn't have shorts on. Bright purple undies on show and the look of terror on that boy's face was hilarious. She just ran off and a friend followed with her pants. In high school my brother and I were both in theater. The other kids started a trend of pantsing one another. But one day they tried it on my bro. He was going commando that day for whatever the frick reason and the entire backstage. I was up front building sets. Got a view of his pale hairy butt. The trend withered and died that day. I had a student who would sit in the back of the classroom and pretend to masturbate while staring at me. I really did not want to have to get the principal involved for what I understood as extremely poor decision making in an attempt to impress his classmates but two instances was enough. I had to watch him tell his mother what he had done in horror. Just finished my first year of teaching middle school. I had one particular student who did not view me as an authority and refused to work in my class. This was especially concerning because this student was placed in an advanced class and chose to not learn purely because of who the teacher was. This also meant that the student's classmates were well behaved, gifted students. One day, while the whole class was completing an assignment, this student was not working. But when I addressed the issue, the student threw a fit and started crawling around on the floor, underneath the other students' desks. Now I don't know when you've last been in a middle school classroom, but the floor is absolutely filthy. This student thoroughly embarrassed themselves, as was evident by the looks received from the other students. The whole situation was extremely awkward for everyone, especially when the student realized that they would get no support from the other students. Just trying to start a game of night crawlers. Kid in a fedora offering high fives in the hallway, but then dabbing just before the other person's hand made contact. It was supposed to be a prank for a vlog. I had a couple of marker clear fangirls a couple years ago that just gave me the heebie jeebies. Group of about 20 kids that run up and down the halls shouting about memes. One of which, when asked what he did over the weekend, started with so. Do you know the, insert obscure meme, while making Earth Day posters one kid tried to disguise pot leaves as palm trees, 
there were several I love trees on it. Earth Day was on 4 stroke 22 so he also wrote the first two with a swirl at the end so that it looked like he'd written 4 stroke 20 but it just looked like 4 stroke 202. I probably should keep a list, but they happened so often I don't think I'd ever be able to keep up with it. Not a teacher. There was this girl who liked the popular athletic girl. She liked her a little too much. She made a slideshow and presented to the whole class. Felt kinda bad. One of my mother's students took a whole pizza in the box out of her office and just started eating. When told to stop and put it back he licked the rest of the pizza and asked if he could have it. She said no and told him to throw it away. He started arguing that it was better in his stomach than in the trash. My mom was furious. Not a teacher but I had a classmate on a field trip rub mud all over his clothes and body so he could go home. Turns out his mom's car broke down and she couldn't pick him up. He had to wear his muddy clothes for the rest of the trip. One of my best friends ate a couple x lax so she could go home early one day in high school. Except she had locked her keys in her car. And her dad couldn't pick her up until like 6 that evening. And none of us wanted to give her a ride home while she was pooping her guts out every few minutes. Rachel, if you're reading this, I love you, but this is still one of my favorite stories to tell. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.